Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. This is the uh, this is the regular meeting of the Citrus County Board of County Commissioners for July 26th. We're going to call it to order. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping in case you were here earlier. Uh, don't want to cause any more confusion. We have to. We had a preliminary budget meeting, which we did not adjourn. We just continued it because we have to finish up some business from that. So that's on the side, still in recess, okay? Uh, then what we'll do is we're going to proceed with this meeting, and if we get to the information, which I'm going to ask Mr. Oliver to share in a minute, if we get the information we need before the end of uh, we go to the 501, we're going to reconvene that meeting and deal with the final preliminary budget. If we don't, uh, then I'll let Mr. Oliver explain to you what the process is. So just if it seems like we're jumping back and forth between meetings, I'm not, not going to do that until we've covered the vast majority of our regular business meeting. But we may do that instead of just going right to the 501s if we run out of time, okay? So with that said, I want to thank everyone again for being here. Today, giving us our invocation is going to be our own veteran, Mr. Douglas Wright, who's going to lead us in the invocation. And then after that, I believe we have Arlena Newson. Yeah, okay, hi. Uh, and she's going to be leading us in the pledge. This is uh, one of our local female veterans. And she served in the United States Air Force for six years. And throw something at me if I say something wrong. And uh, actually was spent, I thought this was fascinating, spent her six years at Moody Air Force Base in Valdosta, Georgia, supporting A-10s, where the first parachute I ever packed saved the life of a pilot. I thought that is pretty amazing. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. So if you would, if you want to join us, I'd invite you to stand. Mr. Ray will lead us in invocation, and then Ms. Newsom in the pledge. Chairman, could Ms. Arlene come up and stand here? Sure. Yeah, can you come? Okay, good. As soon as I'm finished, you can have it. Okay. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, we come humbly before you, thanking you and praising you, Lord God, for this day that you allowed us to be a part of. Father God, we have had a robust uh, morning session, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that this afternoon session will be just as peaceful and respectful because we know, Lord God, you're not the author of confusion. Now, Father, bless each and every commissioner on the dais. Give them the wisdom. Give them the knowledge. Give them the fortitude to make the decisions for each and every citizen of Citrus County. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence. We continue to ask you to be with us through this whole afternoon session. And we pray this in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you both for your service. Okay, could we have a roll call, please? This is a regular meeting of the Citrus County Board of County Commissioners this 26th day of July, 2022. In attendance are Chairman Ronald E. Kitchen, Jr., First Vice Chair Ruthie Schleba, Second Vice Chair Holly Davis, Commissioner Scott Carnahan, and Jeff Carn sorry. Kennard, <laughs> County Administrator Randy Oliver, and County Attorney Denise A. Diamond Line. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Oliver, I understand item B9. If you all look at the consent agenda on <coughs> B9, the special meeting date that we're going to be asking to set is going to change from August 9th to August 30th. That is correct. correct. So if you'd notate that, please, so that item is being changed to August 30th. Is there any other changes, deletions, or additions? No, sir. Okay, so with that said, could we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Commissioner Carnahan makes the motion, second by Commissioner Slaybaugh. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. It passes unanimously. Next, we have the consent agenda, which is item B1 through B9. Commissioners, what's your pleasure with the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the consent agenda. B1 through B9. Thank you. Commissioner Slaybell makes the motion. Second. Second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment on the consent agenda? Okay. Commissioners, any further discussion? Okay. All in favor say, I'm sorry. Yes. Never mind. Go ahead. Okay. Never mind. So, so all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. I believe we are now to proclamation C1 and C2. 
Mr. Chair, motion to approve C1 and C2. Second. Second. Okay, so Commissioner Kennard makes the motion, second by Commissioner Slaybar. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Folks are here, Doug. Uh, we have representative from the Girl Scouts to accept the proclamation. I need to read a background and then I'll read the proclamation. Okay, you want us down there for these? Yes, sir. Okay, well, board want to come down front? But we're going to do the purple heart first. Okay. For those individuals representing the purple heart, come forward, please. Board of County Commissioners of Citrus County for the proclamation, proclamation, Purple Heart Day. Whereas the Purple Heart, originally known as the Military Badge of Merit, was established by General Orders of General George Washington 240 years ago on August 7th, 1782. It is the oldest military decoration in the world in present use. The Water Department first adopted the Purple Heart as a combat award on February 22nd, 1932, exclusively for those members of the armed forces who were killed, died of wounds, or wounded by an enemy instrument of instrument of war and whereas the National Purple Heart Hall of Honor estimates that 1.8 million members of the armed forces of the United States have been awarded the Purple Heart and merit the <coughs> reverence of their fellow countrymen for their selfish sacrifice in the defense of our Republic and its cherished freedoms and whereas the governor of Florida enacted legislation passed by the Florida legislator in 2012 designated August 7th of each year as Purple Heart Day. Citrus County is a Purple Heart County and home to our dozens designated Purple Heart in entities to include two Purple Heart cities, the first Purple Heart School District, and law enforcement agency in the nation, Florida's first state, first Purple Heart Trail. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners of Citrus County, Florida, is hereby proclaimed August 7, 2022, as Purple Heart Day and recognize the 240th anniversary of the Purple Heart and its proud legacy by proclaiming August 7, 2022, as Purple Heart Day and invite Citrus County residents to join with the board in paying tribute to all Purple Heart recipients for the extraordinary sacrifice and bravery, si bravery signed by all five county commissioners. On behalf of all yes, veterans, Purple Heart recipients in this county, thank you so very much. We're in the best county, best state, and the best country in the world. And this county is all about veterans. It's huge. I am so proud and privileged to live here, and things like this mean more than I have the words for. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, for those individuals representing the Girl Scouts, come forward, please. Okay, uh, a little background. Uh, this is a bronze award in Citrus County. The bronze award is the highest award a Girl Scout Junior can earn. Girl Scout Juniors identify as a community issue they care and research about which, what causes the issues to come up with solutions and work with communities to make a plan to bring the solution to life. Troop 14100, led by Danielle McGeorge, is from Homosassa and has earned the bronze award. This project is called Sign and Ro About Role Miles. The troop recognizes their local shelter had more animals than supplies. The girls collected donations and supplies to make blankets for animals. They learned how to measure, cut, pen, and sew blankets. They are advocate for projects with Facebook, utilize social media to get their message out to as many people. Below are the girls' names from the troop. Kaylee Judge, Gianna Smith, Vivian Goulash, Kylie Kayman, Emily Greathouse. They are receiving a bronze award. And just put a little plug in there, they have a little tea on August 3rd <laughs> at Black Diamond, right? Amen. Okay, let's move on. The Board of County Commissioners of Citrus County, Florida Proclamation, the importance of Girl Scouts to today's girls. Whereas since our beginning, Girl Scouts has emphasized public service and civic engagement 
and has fostered a sense of community in girls. Girl Scouts work to champion the ambitious, cultivate talents, and develop the skills of girls to confidently pursue their passions and make the world a better place. During a time when girls are experiencing increased level of anxiety, stress, loneliness, and depression, Girl Scouts provides community consistency and connections for girls and a safe haven for all uncertainty. And whereas the girls say that Girl Scouts support their mental health and is accepting safe space where they feel free to themselves and where leaders and other girls are, are sources of support during difficult times. Girl Scouts play an indis indispensable role in engaging girls in after school and out of school programming and experiencing that expanding their world and allowing them to tap into their inner in innovator change maker and leader. Girl Scouts en engages girls of all grades, levels, and civic programming that deepens their understanding of democracy and government rather than for a lifetime of civic engagement and motivates them to take action on issues that are important to them. Whereas Girl Scouts offers girls 21st century programming in science, technology, engineering, and math, the outdoors, entrepreneurship, and beyond, helping girls develop invaluable life skills. Girl Scouts take on projects that have been measurable and sustainable impact on community by accessing the need, designing a solution, completing a project, inspiring others to sustain it. Today, more than 50 million women trailblazers, visionaries, and leaders are Girl Scouts alums who have made the world a better place. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners of Sisters County, Florida, is hereby proclaimed the week of September 5th, 2022, as Girl Scouts of Sisters County and applaud the Girl Scouts movement and the Girl Scouts of West Central Florida for providing girls with safe, inclusive, all-girl spaces where they hone their skills and develop leadership abilities. Signed by all five county commissioners. Thank you to the entire Citrus County Board of Commissioners and a very special thank you to Commissioner Schleback. We are committed to increasing Girl Scout membership and impact within Citrus County. Girls are living through a transformative time and as we move forward to the new normal, Girl Scouts mission remains steadfast. We build girls of courage, confidence and character who make the world a better place. Thank you. Okay, that now takes us to open to the public. If you're here and you would like to address the board on any subject, you've seen the agenda, if you want to hold your comments on that item until we get to it, or if you wish to speak to it now, that is your choice. And um, if you're here as a citizen or on your own, you have three minutes to speak. The time will show up at the podium. If you're here representing a group and that group has a letter on file giving you permission to speak for them, please let us know. We'll give you five minutes. And with that said, and please fill out a green card before or after speaking. And if there's somebody who wishes to speak, please come forward. Tell us your name and we're ready to go. Hi, I'm Marion Hansen. Could you, could you stand behind a microphone, please, so we can hear you? <laughs> that would probably help, right? Thank you. Hi, my name is Marion Hansen. I live in Citrus County. The state adopt a highway, litter pickup, is run by the individual local counties. There was a 3% adopt the highway sign in front of McDonald's in Inverness. Complaints were made. Oops, the contract is nowhere to be found. No one knows how the sign got there. It was taken down immediately. Another 3% sign showed up on the corner of Lecanto Highway and 200. Complaints were made. Oops, the contract is nowhere to be found. No one knows how the sign got there. It was taken down immediately. A third sign showed up that said Les G. Brandon. We all know the Let's Go Brandon shout out. Complaints were made. Oops, the contract is nowhere to be found. No one knows how the sign got there. It was taken down immediately. Regarding our libraries, stop banning our books, regulating what our libraries do or do not do. It is un-American and borders on treason. 
Kitchen and Carnahan doing their best to stop or slow down anything that benefits Citrus County citizens. Carnahan has not lived here in quite a long time. Neither Kitchen or Carnahan are running again. We won't miss you, but history will remember you. Liter liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please don't applaud. We've been here before. No applause, no booing, no cheering, please. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. I'm here this afternoon name, to please? speak on the name, please. Uh, Connie Martin Carter, Beverly Hills. I'm here to speak on the at the be the request of our chairman of the Beverly Hills Municipal Service Benefit Unit regarding the increase in the fee. The fee has so not been increased me. since its inception in 2001. Excuse, excuse me, is that five minutes or two, three that you're asking for? You say you're speaking on behalf of that organization. Is the MSBU an organization? How, how much time, Jeannie, can you do it in three? Yes, they, they are, but the question is, do they have a letter on file? No, okay, so we're three minutes. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, let me, I'm going to restart her, though. Okay. As I mentioned, there has been no increase since 2001. In the last two years plus, we've found that we are using money to pay the bills um, from the reserve funds. It is in the resolution that we have 5% a year put into the reserve funds specifically for a catastrophic event that may occur. Um, by doing this, we have the funds handy. By using them, we don't. This fee was given careful consideration before we made, we took the vote and made the suggestion to you all to consider it as well. We have, as I mentioned, 5% per year put into the, um, the fund, and we are, um, really getting a little bit nervous as we the bills come in as you know everything has gone up and it doesn't stop so we wanted to get on top of this before it got really bad um, with all of this in mind your advisory council suggested that we increase the fee from nine dollars per year to fifteen dollars per year this is a fee that will show up on property bills and it will be once a year. We believe that this increase will pay the bills each month without going into our reserves. We will then be able to add street lighting, increase our reserve funds of course, and continue the beautification of Beverly Hills that has been on hold for two years. Um, I sincerely hope personally that this suggestion that your council gives will be considered carefully so that we can move on and make Beverly Hills better than it is. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Can we have the next speaker, please? Good afternoon. My name is Mr. John Hancock. I live in the Crystal Manor section of Crystal River. And I have three simple complaints, if they were. One is on West Bluebell Drive. There is no speed limit sign as you turn onto the road. But yet, as you go down to almost the end of the road where it dead ends, an eighth of a mile from that dead end, there's a speed limit sign. Uh, the logic in that, please? Can we move that sign up to the beginning of the road so that the speed limit is observed all the way through so people don't have to worry about jumping out of the way when cars go flying by at 45, 50 miles an hour. The second issue is the Dunellen Road, Highway 19 light, traffic light. There's been way too many accidents. An easy solution is to make a turn lane going, if you're heading south, put a turn light there so people can aggress from one side to the other without worrying about causing an accident or being in an accident. I lived here for two years now, and I've seen three accidents at that intersection because of that. And on the north side, if you're heading north, there's an actual turn lane going nowhere. Once you make the, if you're going north, you turn, there's a dead end road right there. 
So why is there a traffic light for that, but going south, there's nothing? And the third issue I have is the fact that in the Crystal Manor area, there seems to be a growth of homeless camps popping up. And that I take seriously because with homeless camps, you have some people who are just down on their luck trying to do something, and then you have those who are criminal elements who are looking for ways to break into homes and other such things. And I could tell you as a responsible firearm owner, if somebody breaks into my house, the morgue is going to be called. I value my family and I value my life over those. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker, please. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I'm Cheryl Melton. I live in Citrus Springs. Um, you have many people that come and stand here and they have all sorts of things they ask for, which is fine and that's what you are here to listen to. Um, I'm sure that the people who ask for things and they get them are very, very happy. For instance, the residents of Beverly Hills have been asking for sidewalks with handrails for some time now and they're there. They're feeling much safer now. Um, Citrus Springs, we're getting those roads paved that we've been asking for for a long time and we're very happy and it's a lot safer. But those are specific areas of our county and that's wonderful. But I'm talking to you about our entire county. And what I mean by that is I'm talking about the Sheriff's Department. Our Sheriff is asking you for a budget that will help this entire community. We are down 48 deputies. You know how serious that is? He's asking you to give him a budget where he's got money for salaries. We have lost so many of these deputies who have gone to other counties because they're getting paid more. And they still live in Citrus County. But they're working elsewhere because they're making more money. We need money for training. We need money for equipment. We need money for those body cams he's been asking for. Because I'm going to tell you what, our county is not just for the residents that live here. We're quite the tourist destination. We have people coming from other states. We have people coming from out of the country. And they need to feel safe here or it's going to impact our economy in our county because these people are going to stop coming here. We need that very much. Our county is growing by leaps and bounds. Where I live, within a block and a half of my house, are 10 new homes going up. That's just in my one little block and a half. You are getting more and more people coming and we have less and less deputies. How do you think the families of these deputies feel when they walk out the door every morning? You think they're worried that they're coming back home again? You know, um, this is something that there's no one that will say, no, I don't want to feel safe. But you know, I'm going to just leave you with this. When those deputies are safe, then everybody else in the county is safe too. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next speaker, please. Uh, John Wood, Citrus Springs. Are politicians above the law? It appears so in Citrus County. As everyone knows, ignorance of the law is no excuse and the legal standards either knew or should have known. By being an elected official, you are held to a higher standard and are expected to conduct yourselves accordingly. According to the Florida Association of Counties Code of Ethics, individual and collective adherence to high ethical standards by public officials is central to the maintenance of public trust and confidence in government. Over a month ago, Kitchen and Kennard, the primary and alternate members of the canvassing board, were made aware of their endorsements of Missoula when he was a state senate candidate. Even though their endorsements were technically rendered before they were on the canvassing board, it was at that time that Kitchen and Kennard were on notice that they could no longer endorse any candidate from that moment on. Doing so would possibly be a violation of Florida Statute 102.141, which in the opinion of the Division of Elections would disqualify them from serving on the canvassing board as they are enjoined under state statute from publicly endorsing a candidate as members of the canvassing board. After the first canvassing board meeting, Kitchen and Kennard should have informed Missoula that they could not in any way, manner, shape, or form continue to endorse any candidate. Yet it appear, appears they have failed to inform Missoula of this fact. Then on July 15, 2022, Missoula published an ad on his Facebook page with photos of Kitchen and Kennard 
stating that he was honored to have the endorsements of these distinguished elected officials. Missoula stated he received Kitchen and Kennard's verbal approval for the endorsements. But once Kitchen and Kennard were on the canvassing board, they had a legal and ethical duty to inform Missoula that he could no longer use their endorsements. But they failed to do so, as did Mo Baird, who was supposed to know the law. Mo Baird was also on notice of this situation and failed to act accordingly. So how can anyone, including Paul Reinhardt and Todd Cloud, expect to have an honest and fair election and ballot count when two members of the canvassing board have endorsed their opponent? And another member of the canvassing board, Mo Baird, has failed to act by removing them. It's time for these canvassing board members to resign and have ethical, law-abiding citizens in these positions. Can you save GBI? What? You got me? I guess today's the day everybody would be nice showing up. Uh, next speaker, please. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, sorry, let me talk into the microphone. I apologize. Uh, I didn't come up here Can with you give us your name, please? Yes, sir. Uh, John, J-O-H-N. My last name is Bodner. Uh, I didn't come up here with a speech like a lot of other people. Uh, I just, I got a real simple issue. I would have waited to address it, but um, I just, I just don't really have much time. Um, so I, I moved to Citrus Springs about a year ago. Um, and uh, uh, I moved there with my wife. We're trying to build a life here, build a family. Um, down my road where we've moved, it's law enforcement teachers and truck drivers. Um, we're just working class people. Um, the house we got, we put basically everything into um, as for permits and for just making the house work and trying to get everything together. Um, a lot of us are young. We just, you know, we're just starting out our lives. Um, and I think it was about a month ago I got a thing in the mail about this uh, Citrus Springs water line plan or the sewage treatment plan or whatever it is that they plan on putting in. Um, and I read in that letter they want to charge us $2,000 to put this in per lot. Um, one of my neighbors has $4,000 that they want to charge. Um, I just, to be quite frank, I just, I just don't really think that's fair. Uh, we, have, we already have water and sewage at our houses. And, and quite, in fact, just before I came here today, I'd gotten a letter from the county that the uh, health, Florida Department of Health wants $100 from me for a permit to operate the sewage system that's already there on property. Um, that's its own issue. My point is, I just, I feel like we're almost kind of being punished for choosing to live here. Um, and I don't, I don't really think that's fair especially when you're just young and trying to build everything and build a home here. Um, it's pretty unfortunate to just get hit with, well, now not only are you going to pay the fees to have built your house and get your house started, but now you've got to pay an extra two grand to just keep moving on with your life. Um, and I understand. I, 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 I love that the county wants to put infrastructure in. I appreciate and I understand that, but it can't come at the expense of the people who are already there who've already put a lot of money into trying to build up an area. Um, it's just, uh, it's very, very, very hard for us already with cost of living, as everybody already knows, is sky high. We just don't have much else to give. To ask for another two grand is really stressing the resources. So I just, I, I can't really tell you guys what to do, but please keep that in mind when you go over this uh, water line assessment today. So I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Janet Barrick on behalf of Citrus Springs Civic Association. We've had several meetings with our members. One of the things we talk about is roads, potholes, ruined roads by builders. What we're asking is that you get with your building department that does the approvals and gives the certificates of occupancy. Because one of the things in your building codes is if the builder has torn up the road in front of the residences that they are working on, they need to fix that road. And we would like you to tell them, please do what they're asked and make sure that the builder repairs the roads. I didn't bring pictures with me, but I will send them to Mr. Oliver to show him the conditions that our residents are facing with these roads from the builders. 
And yes, Citrus Springs is building. Hot, heavy, we're not slowing down. Okay, the other day there was a notice about the referendum possibly. The commissioners that are staying on the board, I'd like you to really think carefully. 2024 would be where you wanna put the referendum for the sales tax. Please make sure that you don't backslide. Make it for roads only, four year sunset, and a quarterly report to tell everybody what has been done. I hated, and a lot of people called me on this, and it said that it was stated, and other things. The last gas tax, or last sales tax, went down in flames because it was the one cent, and it said for roads and other things. We don't want other things. We need the roads fixed. The administrator was given the job to find the money to fix the roads. He's unable to. You don't have the money. And what was come up with was the referendum, but you wanna push it down the road two more years. That's fine. Keep pushing it down the road. And at this rate, it'll be 200 years before the roads are resurfaced. Also, you wanna start saving money. I suggest, and this is, this is one you just need, that we talked about at the meeting, because you come into the Citrus Springs building, it is colder than bejesus. And they now have a lock on the thing, so I cannot adjust it up. We would like to see either 74 or 75 as the temperature the county uses in county buildings. It's a comfortable mm -hmm. temperature. Currently, the ones that are locked at Citrus Springs are on, set at 72. Ask the electric company, raise it one or two degrees and you're gonna save a lot of money. And that's their first suggestion to citizens. So our citizens said a first suggestion to the county is please adjust the temperature up to either 74 or 75, which is a more comfortable temperature. Um, the repairing of, I got lots of complaints about this, West Citrus Springs Boulevard, the scop money. Please go out there and ride on that road and listen with your ears and you will hear, <laughs> okay, the road is not being done like any of the other scop roads. I don't know what's going on. I know it's a different paver. And you can also already start seeing cracks in the road just before you come up to the Central Ridge, not Central Ridge, the um, elementary school on West Citrus Rings Boulevard. Um, it says, what else did they have me? Oh. People would like to see the dollars in Citrus County spent for needs, not wants. And they also said they would like to see it spent on people, such as getting a live stream facility so that we can have Baker Act facilities in Citrus Springs. Or not, well, it could be in Citrus Springs. You could come by us, that'd be fine, I got space. Otherwise, somewhere in Citrus County where our sheriff's deputies don't lose hours and hours of time. We had a meet and greet on Thursday night. Our sheriff's deputy, okay, our meeting started, the doors opened at five, our meeting started at six. Our sheriff's deputy was unable to get there till almost 7.30 because there are not enough deputies that are out on the field and they were working on the bank robbery in Crystal River. So everybody that was available was pulled. You need to realize we need more sheriff's deputies out in the field. And I know it's gonna cost money and I don't like to spend money, I really don't. However, there are certain things that you really need to Thank spend Thank you very much, money. time's expired. <clears throat> Next speaker, please. Yeah, I like your system. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Marianne Weatherington, Citrus County. The sheriff acknowledges the current state of the economy and soaring inflation in his opening letter and writes, quote, while inflation is rising everywhere, price hikes are particularly devastating to the households of our deputies, communication officers, and support staff colleagues with already tight budgets. Nearly all their expenses go to necessities, food, energy, housing, which have seen some of the largest increases at different points over the past year, end quote. He understands how difficult it is for people to make ends meet and believes this trend will continue through 2027. Bearing this in mind, according to census.gov, 
The median household income in this county from 2016 through 2020 was $45,689. Per capita income in the past 12 months was $28,174. Persons per household was 2.25. The average age in this county is 56.7, about 19 years older than the national average. We have an older population, many of whom are on fixed incomes. The sheriff is ignoring the fact that the people in this county have those exact same issues and has put forth a budget to give some unprecedented increases, including what appears to be a 23% increase for himself. His current salary is $144,500 and would increase to $181,900. And don't forget the 49.18% contribution to his pension fund that would go from $71,000 up to $89,000. Palm Beach pays their share of $187,900, and their population is 1.5 million. Citrus County has a population of 150,000. I believe our sheriff is paid quite well for his scope of responsibility. The sheriff wishes to expand his staff, but has not yet been able to fill current positions. Where is the budgeted money gone that was not used for staffing this last year? He leads us to believe that he cannot fill these openings due to the current pay level being too low. However, other counties, like Palm Beach, that is one of the highest paying for its sheriff, board members, clerk of court, etc., also struggles with, to hire deputies. Every single branch of the military is struggling to meet their 2022 fiscal recruitment goals. The top three reasons why young people are shunning the military are political correctness, vaccine mandates, and the war in Russia. Money is not the problem. Money is not the reason police recruitment is difficult at the moment either, and throwing money at the issue will not resolve it. In closing, I will circle back to the beginning. The sheriff knows we are heading into a recession. He must take the responsible position and tighten his belt, just like the rest of the county is being forced to do. If he is choosing to be irresponsible, the BOCC must step up. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, next speaker, please. I'm Mark Conley. I live in Hernando. I. Uh, I came to speak about the uh, draft library policies and uh, the, the review of the and re revision of, dra of library policies was prompted by uh, a controversy over the 2021 gay pride displays in the libraries. But the draft policy does nothing to address those displays or uh, the possibility of other uh, ideologically controversial uh, displays being placed in the library to promote issues that are inconsistent with our community values. Um, the draft library policy uh, in, in policy 12 uh, incorporates the uh, guidelines of the American Library Association which is uh, responsible for pushing an LGBT plus agenda in our libraries and including supporting the use of our libraries for, uh, um, for drag queen story hours. Um, the uh, ALA guidelines also um, have a distinct emphasis on equity, diversity, inclusion, and social justice. This sounds good, but over the past year, we have come to learn the difference between equity, which promotes equal outcomes, and equality of opportunity, which is the foundation of American liberty, liberty and reflects our community values. We have also learned that calls for so, social justice are really serving as euphemisms for the advocation of critical race theory, a Marxist ideology that promotes racism. I am concerned that uh, Policy 12, which incorporates the ALA guidelines, could open the door for displays supporting LGBT plus and CRT ideology in Citrus County libraries. Um, the section of Policy 12 outline, that outlines general selection criteria for materials in our libraries should be amended to include the following additional, additional criteria, which are totally absent from that section. Materials should reflect or be consistent with community values. 
and should not be in conflict with state laws. Uh, these two additional criteria should also inform the decisions on displays in the libraries. Um, Governor DeSantis signed the extremely your, popular uh, Parental Rights your time, and Education Bill. Your time has expired. Thank you very much. prohibited LBGT thank, thank propaganda you. in our thank schools. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I, I, I have a letter on file with the, uh, with the clerk, um, the representative of the Mass Resistance Citrus County Group, so I would request the five minutes. Can you use your name, please? Yes, my name is John Labriola. I live in Inverness, and I am here also to discuss the, laft, uh, the, uh, the draft library policy. Um, as you know, and as the last speaker mentioned, this whole process came about because of the controversy over last year's um, LGBT Pride Month uh, displays. But the draft, as presented, and as he mentioned, does nothing to address uh, those, those, that particular issue. Uh, dra uh, policy 12, as he mentioned, uh, adopts, that's the language in the, in the policy, the guidelines of the very liberal uh, American Library Association, which does have a record of aggressively, aggressively promoting LGBT materials and even, um, targe even um, events targeting children in the libraries, including drag queen story hours. Okay, this is a backdoor way of sneaking LGBT displays back into Citrus County libraries. I've gone through the ALA website very extensively uh, because the, there's links within the document that you have that actually, if you go to the PDF version, it links to, to various documents and to the website itself. And the ALA's website encourages libraries to celebrate LGBT Pride Month and something called Rainbow Book Month, which is the same as LGBT Pride Month, and provides recommended LGBT reading lists for children as young as three, including uh, such titles as Two Grooms on a Cake for ages six through nine, which celebrates same-sex marriage, and The True Story of a Boy Named Penelope for ages four through eight, which celebrates transgenderism in children. The ALA website also provides tips and resources on how to put on drag queen story hours. One of the documents describes this as a quote, remarkable and important initiative that promotes acceptance and inclusi inclusivity. Another document on the, on the ALA's website um, also gives multiple resources on conducting drag queen story hours, which it describes, where, where it describes happy children, this is a quote, in sparkles and princess singing, song, princess singing songs and making color, colorful unicorn horns as our queens read Jesse Seema's Not Quite a Narwhal. Other sections of the ALA's web website celebrate and defend sexually explicit LGBT books directed at children, including Genderqueer, which includes graphic, description, graphic depictions of teens engaging in oral sex, Lawn Boy, which depicts sex between men and children, and Beyond Magenta, which includes a graphic description of a six-year-old performing oral sex on multiple men. I also um, have an article here about how the ALA encourages libraries to. Uh, librarians in conservative areas like our own to, quote, sneak in LGBT content into everything that they do. Why would Citrus County Libraries adopt the guidelines of an organization like this? We're asking you to please amend this draft policy to delete the section adopting ALA guidelines, and we're also asking you to insert uh, language into the policy to ban displays of sexual orientation and gender identity, as Chairman Kitchen proposed earlier this year. Our county government should not be spending money, uh, our, our money, our tax dollars, on one-sided displays promoting and glamorizing homosexuality and transgenderism, especially at a time when um, so much research and, and studies are coming out documenting the irreversible damage caused by transgender surgeries and puberty blockers. We also need language in the policy to ban drag queen story hours. Grooming does exist in Citrus County. Diana Elizabeth Guevara of Inverness, a man who identifies as a transgender woman, recently made national news after being arrested earlier this month for molesting multiple boys in our community. Please, let's not do anything to further promote an atmosphere of exploitation by sponsoring displays that encourage the sexualization of children. Governor DeSantis recently signed uh, very popular legislation to keep LGBT propaganda 
and indoctrination out of the public schools to protect our children. We're simply asking you to do the same for our public libraries. And I have all these documents here. If, um, if you could distribute these to the commissioner. Can you give them to the clerk, please. You got them? Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. How are you today? I'm Mary Sear again. <laughs> I'm also now a school board candidate as well as a citizen today. But I'm here today because um, we don't want to see this in the library. It's called taxation without representation. I think you need monies for the police station, uh, for the sheriffs, and not so much for wants in the library and not needs. And I want to also say that the Florida Constitution does not recognize, if you read in the Florida Constitution, it does not recognize any other union as marriage other than between a man and a woman. And I want to say that, um, I, I also I want to say that the CDC, and I'm sorry I'm a little bit unprepared today, but the numbers I don't have for you, but the CDC has come out and it really said that AIDS runs high among transgenders and homosexuals, and the boys have multiple uh, partners, and um, also suicide runs high. So why encourage a behavior that is proven to be harmful to young people? And then real quick, I want to finish, but I want to say this personally. You know, since I became involved against this, I have been called a communist, a hater. Nothing, nothing, I have not called one person a name. You have never heard me call anybody a name. First time I was here, I said, I'm here out of love. Love for the children. Let's let them be kids. Let not, not put adult matters on children at a young age. Adults can do whatever they want to, but these are children, and I will stand for them. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Hi. My name is Paula Johnson, and I live in Inverness, and I'm not going to be or, or reiterate everything that's been said. Um, I just want to appeal to you all. Oh, I know you're very intelligent and very cognizant of what's going on in our community. I just pray and hope that you will review the information that was given to the clerk of the court to look at that. And um, our community was very vocal in our dissent in this agenda, but I respectfully ask that uh, the esteemed electrical commi elected commissioners to amend the draft policy, removing policy 12 verbiage. Um, Governor DeSantis recently signed legislation to keep the LGBT propaganda and indoctrination out of our public schools to protect our children. We're asking the same consideration to our public libraries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Good afternoon again. Hope you're well. Donna Rommel, Inverness. I am an avid library rat, and I missed this LBGQ display, so I don't know if it involved science. God is going to allow this to go on or go away. Meantime, this needs to be put to the voters, the taxpayers who are working for their family unit and cannot be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go to the next speaker, please. Yes, uh, my name is Greg Hoang. I'm from Floral City. Um, I'm here to talk about the LGBT uh, agenda being pushed on our children. Um, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather, and uh, uh, this I believe this is dangerous. And things like the Drag Queen Story Hour, it makes it fun and exciting for these children, and it's just nefarious. But I'm no expert. I would call on each of you to visit the, the American College of Pediatrics where it has numerous articles and videos explaining uh, how bad this is for our children. I'd also ask you to visit uh, uh, an article called the Branson Report 
put out by the American Psychological uh, Association uh, 2013 where it states, and I quote, 10 years after uh, th these kids have transitioned, has the highest suicide rate in the world, in the world. Uh, this is dangerous, and I would ask each and every one of you to consider this and reject anything that has to do this to our children. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Good afternoon. My name is Alan Otis. I live here in Inverness. I've been here going on my eighth year. Uh, my family and I came down here with uh, a crew of workers. We found that Citrus County was probably one of the best places to do business. And we started building houses five years ago. And uh, it's been going strong. This is a lovely place to live. It's very respectful to veterans such as myself. And I want to keep it this way. One of the things that's troubling me is I'm watching the amount of tax dollars that seems to be being asked by the by the uh, the county here. I read in the paper yesterday that Mr. Oliver is thinking about raising the mill rate. Well, my question is, being a developer, and five years ago we didn't have an impact fee, but we have had an impact fee for the last four or five years now. That's thousands and thousands of dollars that we contribute to every house that we build, which should cover connections to sewers and water lines and things of that nature. A couple years ago, you asked us to increase the sewage system on anything under one acre. So now we pay about five to $6,000 more per sewage system that goes in on anything under an acre. And you're talking about making connections to sewer systems after people spent tens of thousands of dollars upgrading their systems. That doesn't make sense to me. My real concern is, we see houses being built everywhere. It's still a good place to come to and a good place to live, but I want to know with all this development, and this is a balancing, people want development, but then they worry about being overcrowded, and that's a concern for everyone. But my concern is, you've asked for this development. You've had the tax rates low and things of that nature. You've brought people in from all over the country. What are you doing with this money? We got property taxes right now, or property values, excuse me, that have gone up from last year on an average between 20 and 25 percent. That means everyone in here, when they get their tax bill, it's going to be quite a bit higher than it was last year. And it was higher than the year before and the year before. So what I want to know, and I think all these folks want to know, is what are you doing with all the money that's coming into this county? Because on my best estimate, you're, you're probably receiving at least 25 percent more revenue this year than you did last year. So all of these things, like the police department, which is a necessary asset, and should be funded to an extent, and the school departments, we should have this money available without raising taxes. The mill rate needs to come down to compensate for the amount of revenue that you folks have brought in. The last time I looked, this was about a 71% red community. Most people here voted conservative at about 71%. Most of you folks are Republican. I left a very blue state, the state of Rhode Island, because of taxes, because of the infringement on government on the people. We don't need that here. I want to keep it conservative, whether it's a conservative Democrat Thanks. or Republican, I don't care, but keep your, it your conservative. Your time has expired. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker, please. Please hold your applause. We've asked you not to do that. Before, about could, you, could you get a little closer to the microphone? We seem to be having a problem with the volume in the room today, so if you get a little closer okay, to the microphone. Okay, well, I don't talk that clearly. That's okay. okay. Um, my name is Diane Campbell, and I live in Inverness now instead of Floral City, but I've been in the area for three to four years, and it, the reason why I stayed here was because of the morals and the people that lived in this city. It seemed more like home to me, and I'm 66 years old, so... There's a lot of changes that have gone on in all those years. And one of those changes was that my granddaughter decided that she wanted to be a boy, and that happened in her middle school years. So she decided to have her breasts cut off. Now what doctors, for crying out loud, are letting that happen before they're even old enough to think for themselves? I mean, really. 
And now they're bringing it to the libraries, to the schools. They run counsel certain counselors in the schools. Um, the uh, books, the storybook thing that they're bringing into the libraries and all that. Where are the parents allowed to be involved in this? I, I just don't understand. We're supposed to be teaching our kids reading, writing, arithmetic, things that matter, history. No, they're knocking down statues now and, and tearing up the United States. And I know that's not all y'all's problem. I get that. But somewhere, somebody's got to stop all this nonsense from going on. They're mutilating our children. They're putting ideas in our kids' heads that don't need to be there. That's not what we're supposed to be teaching our children. And I hope you vote against anything that comes across your desk with this in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Hi, my name is Bridget Fagan. Um, I live in Citrus Springs. Um, I recently got a letter about a pipeline project, and it was like $2,000 per <coughs> lot that you had that you were going to have to pay to get this water pipeline put in. Um, my husband and I are both teachers, and we have five lots. So that would be quite a bit of money for us. Um, so I was just voicing my opinion. I don't think, I think it's a great idea, the water system that you guys are putting in but um, we can't afford to pay for that so I don't think that it should be like pressed that we have to pay for that that's all <laughs> thank you thank you very much appreciate you being here next speaker please <clears throat> good afternoon Tim Gilbert from Inverness uh, last time I was up here, I talked about broadband for a minute, so I want to just tap that just for a sec. Um, there was Uvalde teachers during the shooting that didn't get the alert of an active shooter because they didn't have effective broadband in the area. Please keep that in mind. It was an interesting read I saw in Wall Street Journal, so something to consider. Um, first off, I, I want to know who hurt some of these people that I've spoke today and uh, helped them. Um, I have not seen one drag show advertised at our libraries. I have not seen it talked about. Hey, let's plan it out. Um, but what I have seen is multiple Nazi flags now in our county. I've seen three. That's funny. Okay, so um, let's move on. Um, I conducted a survey of 1,000 Citrus residents. Uh, I got about 20, 30% back right now. Um, top issues, housing, environment, economic development, and mental health. No issues on there about anyone trying to surprise host a drag show. Um, it's ironic that someone mentioned earlier about uh, politicians and uh, breaking the law. Um, I'm not going to go on that. You guys are good for me because um, I don't know what's going on there. But we do have a commissioner candidate who violated her campaign finance laws who claims perfect fiscal abilities. So that's interesting. $1,000 limit donations. Um, so bad news. Citrus County is now tied for the third highest unemployment in the state. Why aren't we talking about that? Let's make that a topic we should bring up and bring here. Um, homelessness, great thing. Um, or not a great thing, but uh, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, homeless people on the Forest City Trail. I went biking with my wife not too long ago, and we came across about six at different various spots on the thing. Um, which leads me back to my question that I asked last, the last time I was here at the BOCC was, uh, again, we talked about average salary or median salary in the county, 40, 50,000, where are they gonna live? Please, last time none of you guys responded to any of my comments on that. Um, I would love to get a comment. What is the plan? How do we get these people into housing? Um, they're still staying with families. They're staying, you know, homeless. There's people staying in cars. I spoke to a teacher the other day that's now working three jobs to support her and her two daughters after a nasty divorce. Um, she said the cheapest option that she had found was a rundown trailer for $210,000. Um, what do we do? And we talk about running police out because they don't get paid enough, but then we can't provide housing for workers like that or nurses or anything like that. And yeah, so that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next speaker, please. Kathy Gates, Inverness. The American Library Association is not some left wing nut job group. It is the oldest and the largest library association in the world. I attended the June meeting of the uh, Library Advisory Group in Lacanto. Uh, these policies that you are voting on today were thoroughly discussed there by Eric Head. Um, there was not one person there complaining about anything in these policies. 
In fact, there was only one public speaker at all. He's an area prominent conservative Republican that got up and apologized to that library board for his rhetoric last year. He was embarrassed and he was especially upset over the little mini biographies that were published online about them that were totally inaccurate. He apologized and left. Perhaps that may have been the meeting where they could have brought their concerns to and it could have been discussed with Eric Head or whatever, as opposed to putting you people, the BOCC, on the spot again at the 11th hour, 10 minutes before you're supposed to vote on it. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Hello, I'm Lala Sanders. First of all, I want to um, just tell you a little bit of what I observed just sitting in the back. There's some grown people in the back taking pictures, maybe to put them on social media because they want to chit chat and then have people maybe be on their side. We, we, you know, we are in America, and I'm, now I'm gonna read what, number one, I'm gonna speak about morals. It's so funny because John was walking by, and we have all these crepe morals out there, right? And he had, it, he had it on his head. And the moral thing to do as an American, as a human, Could you address the board, is please? To t is to tell someone, hey, you have something, you know, get rid of it, right? Anyway, morals. Our freedoms, okay, calm down. Our freedoms are being taken away a little at a time. We have companies that have fired employees because of the jab. Freedom to choose a medical decision is ours. We need to separate the weak from the bold. We need strong leaders, pastors, no cowards or weak need that will hold up the Constitution, rule of law. I'm tired of elective officials stabbing me in the back. Enough is enough. It's going to take God's courage to stand on biblical morality and for the citizens of Citrus County. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have the next speaker, please? My name is Vicki Robinson in um, Hernando. The last time we sat here in front of the commission board and listened to all of the commissioners, Ms. Davis was kind enough to speak afterwards. I believe her comment was, and I'm paraphrasing, I saw the library display. There was nothing vulgar. There was nothing obscene. Um, we're not going to have a drag, our, uh, drag queen story hour. And to all of these comments, I'd like to add one word yet. We're not going to have a drag queen story hour yet. Our associations now are not the associations of the past. These things are tainted. They've become tainted. Look at Disney. Look at what they are promoting. If you ever asked if Walt Disney had any intentions of promoting an LGBT display or propaganda or agenda, he would have said no, and everybody else would have said no, not yet, but it is happening. Look what's happened on television. Did you ever think you could sit in your living room and watch pornography in the quiet of your own house on TV, on television? I got three channels when I was a kid. Three channels in black and white, and it, it was Father Knows Best and My Three Sons and The Real McCoys. And if somebody had told me that I could watch pornography on my television set and my kids, if they learned to code, could access it, I'd have to say, oh, that will never happen yet. But it, this is exactly what's happening. One of the commissioners who will go unnamed, I had a private conversation with, who told me in no uncertain terms that if this issue gets put in the public again, just like it did with the New York Times situation, that companies will no longer, will not come to Citrus County. They just won't come here. They don't want to be associated with such a provincial thinking county. And we need jobs. So is that what we're going to do? Are we going to sell our souls to the devil? Because we need jobs now? 
This is where it starts. It's the broken window policy, and y'all know it. Keep the LGBTQ agenda out of our taxpayer-funded institutions, out of our schools, and do what you're up here to do, and that's make this community a better place and not for fringe populations. You have, whether you like it or not, a conservative county. Honor that. Thank you. Please hold your applause. Next speaker, please. Mary Ann Parker, Homosassa. Um, just a little bit of history about the American Library Association. It was founded in 1876. In 1931, they added an Office of Junior Members Roundtable that provided a voice for the younger members of the ALA. In 1939, they uh, instituted the Library Bill of Rights. 1969, they added the Office of Social Responsibilities Roundtable, which included the Rainbow Task Force. In 1970, the Office for Diversity, Literacy, and Outreach Services was added. Also that year was the Task Force on Gay Liberation, otherwise known as the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender Liberation. They campaigned to have books about the gay liberation movement at the Library of Congress reclassified from HQ 71 to 471, which was under the title of Abnormal Sexual Relations, including sex crimes. Transgender Roundtable was also added that year. 1970, the Rainbow Roundtable was the First Nations Gay, Lesbian, and Transgender Professional Organization. In 2010, Over the Rainbow Committee, which annually compiles a biography of books that show the GLBTQ in a favorable light. Currently, the president is Emily Drambinsky. She is a self-proclaimed Marxist and lesbian. In her own words on her Twitter feed, I cannot believe that a Marxist lesbian who believes that collective power is possible to build and can be welded for the better world is president-elect of the ALA Library. I am so excited to see what we can do together. Solidarity. In her speech, she says, quote, the consequences of decades of unchecked climate change, class war, white supremacy, and imperialism has led us here. If we want a world that includes public goods like the library, we must organize our collective power and wield it. As she continues, as the ALA president, I will direct resources and opportunities to a diverse cross-section of the association and advance a public agenda that puts organizing for justice at the center of the library work. She continues, as ALA president, I will bring an organizing approach to association leadership, getting us talking with each other as we collectively develop a national campaign for libraries. And how will I make that happen? Well, let's find out. Remember, there are more of us than there are of them. Does the ALA have an agenda? Is it one that we want to adopt in Citrus County? Thank you. Thank you. Give okay, the next speaker, please. Hi, guys. My name is Richard Began. I'm a resident of Beverly Hills. The last time I was here, though it wasn't on this topic, uh, and the topic I want to talk about today is the MSBU. $17 increase. Um, and I'm really nervous, guys. Uh, that's like $30 million. What happened this year that we need that much of an increase? I don't understand it. But I do want you to understand, the last time I was here, one of you guys mentioned that the people in Beverly Hills, especially us, us seniors, are, are living there and we're housing three, four, five together. I'm thinking, how much crap was this woman full of? I went home. My neighbor's house has one on disability, one on social security, and one that works one job and one that works two jobs. I guess you guys know what's going on in Beverly Hills, or everywhere. In 1983, I retired from Foster's Manufacturing because I didn't like the job at 11.25 an hour. Three years ago, I retired from Citrus Health. I'm an assistant nurse at 10.50 an hour. My money's not going up. Last year, I made $9,700. In 
and nobody wants to live with me, and I don't blame them, I don't want to live with me. <laughs> I'm being forced to sell the house, I have no choice. And I've always made minimum wage and stuff, and I've been a good boy. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't like that I have to sell my home. I wish that I could want to sell my home. Thank you. Thank you. Can you fill out a form, please? Can we have the next speaker, please? If there's any more speakers, please. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Dean Bales, and uh, I live in Homosassa Springs. And uh, here's a little bit of my life story. Uh, when I was a young boy, my mother told me, don't get into a car with a stranger. Didn't say what they do. She just said it wasn't going to be good. Don't do it. And I was eight years old, just a few years after the Stonewall riots. And it happened in New York. I was walking home, and this was in Castleberry, Florida, and a guy pulls up in a car and tried to arrest me and a friend for throwing dirt clods at each other. He claimed he was a cop. I didn't buy it. And, uh, uh, you know, I ran, got away from him. And a few years later, I was 17, and I was at a city pool, and we had to get out of the water for a break time, and I'm sitting on a bench, and this older guy comes over like with a sense of purpose and he sits down right beside me and he pulls out of his shirt pocket a piece of paper that had a very tattered like it's been put to a lot of use and it had a homosexual pornographic joke on it and he read it and he's <laughs> and talking about his first sexual encounter encounter that was same sex and i just got up and, and in disgust and got away from him but some other ruffian later punched him and broke his jaw um, but I would hate to see that this younger generation of kids would have not a piece of paper pulled out of a shirt pocket to try to groom a kid, but they go to a library and pull something vile right off the shelf. And the camel has its nose in the tent by even so much as a rainbow flag. Uh, you know, where's that going to end? Well, we know there's more coming. We, we, it's happening elsewhere, and it's like trying to stop a, a rising tide. It's, it's going to come, seems like, unless we have some pretty uh, stiff laws that are in effect, and I think we've only just begun. And uh, as to this uh, uh, library national organization, well, remember when there was a group of parents who went to a, uh, a meeting with their school and one of the guys there whose daughter been raped by a transgender he got declared some kind of a terrorist they hauled him out in handcuffs he got bloodied and hauled away a uh, big raucous event but they ultimately it led to people severing ties with that uh, overall PTA associations national headquarters and you know what the world didn't end and I think we need to sever ties with the general uh, headquarters of the Library Association because they've just gotten pretty despicable and, and tainted and, and corrupted beyond hope of reform. Uh, once people turn leftist, they don't turn back. It's like a, like a virus that gets in their head that can't be extracted. They're impervious to truth. They just become a truth-crushing, propaganda-dispensing machine. You try to speak logic to them, and the truth just goes Thank you. Thank you very much. Your time's expired. Okay, thanks. Give the next speaker, please. Hello, my name is Matthew Venora. I'm Vice President of East Citrus United. I'm going to talk to you about soccer just for about three minutes, hopefully. I'll be able to get it all in. So I just wanted to bring it forth to y'all's attention. Okay, last season, East Citrus had 450 kids that played at Holden Park. All right, so now what's going on is without this contract, these kids are not going to have any place to play this year. Okay, they might be able to go to West Citrus or Nature Coast, but that's going to be an influx on them. And that's going to be a burden on the parents. The parents are now going to have to travel, OK? So now if these kids don't have no safe haven to play this season in Inverness at Holden Park, because this is where they go, this is where they come, this is where they ride their bikes to when their parents go to work, OK? And there's responsible adults, responsible board members that are there that oversee all these kids. Not only these kids are not going to have a place to play, now you're talking about referees, OK? The majority of referees that play at this park, they get paid. Okay, and they use that money, not only for food, but for their after-school sports activities. Now, if we don't have a contract, 
these referees don't have a place to go and referee or anything of that nature or to even play. All right? Now, you guys have been lied to. Okay? You were lied to about the taxes because the first thing that was brought up was the taxes were bad. Okay? That was disproven. The taxes were fine. All right? There's been no evidence to show that East Citrus did not pay any of their taxes. There's been evidence emailed to all of you that support that everything's been paid and everything's been up to date. Then it was brought to your attention when that failed was that the fields were in disarray, okay? And even your own county commissioner said, hey, the fields fall on us. Field fall on the county. East Citrus was not responsible for the gophers that were on those fields or anything like that. Now you had a group that's come up here and they've made some accusations. All their accusations have been false, okay? All that stuff's been emailed to you and it's been shown to you that they've been false accusations made. Two of the people bringing forth these accusations don't even live in this county. And we need to ask, why are they not playing where they live at? Uh, if you ask around up in Den Ellen, you'll find out why they're not playing up there, I can assure you, okay? But the board that's been here forever has made sure that every year, kids have been able to pay for free. Last year, 58 kids played for free. They didn't have to pay any money out of their own pocket because the board that's in place right now made sure that there was funds and available for kids to play for free because their, their parents could not financially afford that. So basically, if we don't get this contract, these kids don't have a place to play. And there's been nothing that's been shady or done wrong. And I hopefully that y'all have all that information because I know it's been emailed to y'all and I've been available for questions throughout this whole process. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Good afternoon. It's good to see you. I know you're grounded in reality. At least I hope so. I Can just you give us your name, please. Um, my name is Janet Genova. I live in Hernando now. I've been a resident for 20 years. I'm speaking again on behalf of the library and the new policies, the updated policies. Um, I just have to say that I hope that you can look at the incendiary remarks and ideas that have been placed forth to you today and see the reality, see our community, see our diversity, and make a decision based on everyone and what's best for the community. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next speaker, please. Hey, I'm David Schrader, and I'm here to speak uh, about the Citrus United Soccer issue that's on the agenda. Uh, in, in the essence of time, I need to get back to work. So I'm stating my information now. I've been with uh, Brooks, I'm with Brooksville United Soccer Association out of in Hernando County. Uh, I've been there about 30 years, and I've been the president there for about 20 years. Uh, we play games in Citrus, of course, and done that for the, at least the last 25 years. Uh, we've been here for the regular season, uh, recreational soccer and competitive soccer. And we've been here also for the Recreational Sunshine Cup that's held at the end of the year for recreational soccer. We found that this program is well run, well organized. Um, they, it comes down to the, they, uh, John and Ann with Kelsey have come down to the, to our club for the draft, which is one where we pick the players and try to pick it uh, where the teams are most even as possible, where there's no team that's stacked. And it's all about the kids to try to make it an even competition as possible. Um, Citrus does our season scheduling. Uh, that's handled for Hernando, Pasco, and Citrus County, uh, the, four, the three counties that play up here. Um, we've enjoyed coming up here so much that the Sunshine Cup, as I mentioned at the end of the season, is on a rotational basis. We have deferred that a few times to be played in Citrus County. And the reason for that is they do such a good job. John and Ann do a wonderful job up here. The club does a great job. It's well run, well organized. Uh, the fields are well maintained. The, uh, they're, uh, everyone's taken care of. And it also enhances, uh, oddly enough, the, the community 
restaurants and uh, things like that when there's four or five hundred families between kids and players and coaches that come up here uh, and support uh, Inverness and the, and the area. Um, if there have been problems or concerns, I would say address them. We move on, we fix what we know it needs to be fixed, and we move on and make it a better place. Uh, it's always been about the kids, and it should be about the kids, and um, it, they're an integral part of our organization, and we look forward to playing them again this year and hope that you'll honor the contract with them to continue play. Thank you. Thank you. Can the next speaker, please. How you doing? I'm Bill Greslis, live in Inverness. Um, my concern is about the soccer fields also. Both of my boys have played out there from five years old through high school. Dreams are made out there and how I know that, my youngest played goalie out there at East Citrus. Went on to play competitive, went on to be a goalie for a college team. Take these fields away for whatever reason, dreams are lost, okay? My kid got to live his dream. Hopefully, fields will be around for someone else to do the same. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Debbie Wheatley, Inverness, Florida. I'd like to um, talk about Sheriff Pendergrass's bu budget. Um, I know in the past we've said that the sheriff, we needed Sheriff uh, Pendergrass's people on the rivers. That takes money, that takes manpower, that also takes training. We now need Sheriff Pendergrass's people on the bike trails because we have people that were using the e-bikes to get to work on the trails rather than using their, their cars to get to gas. So now we have bikes on those trails that are capable of over 20 miles an hour and 20 miles an hour is pretty conservative. Okay, so we, now we need people on the bike trails for that. I don't know how you would expect Sheriff Pendergrass to, to, to do everything that we're asking him to do unless you expect him to go get another job to fund his own program so that we can be safe. I, I don't understand it. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, we need bodies. And yes, we need a competitive um, salaries for these people. They put their lives on the line every time they put that badge on. We all know that. Citrus County is relatively safe compared to others that are around, but the day is coming. But further down the road, but this, but that. There's a lot of training that needs to be done. There's infrastructure. There's all kinds of things. Equipment, helicopters. I mean, the night capabilities that this man needs. So I would highly say that we, I would highly consider that we do need his his um, his salaries, and we definitely need his budget. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is Terry Morriston from Lacanto. Um, I think today we've heard a lot about the American Library Association. It's practically been a referendum just about that. I actually feel that's been a diversion and a distraction from what we really should be talking about. I think the focus really should be on our own library and the success that it's been in this community. This library has served and continues to serve the needs of every citizen in this room. I think that you have had faith in the guidance of Eric Head to navigate what he sees from the American Library Association with the needs and values of this community, and he's done that well, and our library has been a proven success for our citizens. We have a library that we can and should be proud of, and I feel like that's what we should be talking about here. I'm gonna ask that you continue to have that faith that Eric can navigate those trying waters sometimes to serve all of these people that are here today in this room and in our county as you move forward to try to address the many big issues that we've heard people talk about that our county faces. And I thank you for listening to me, and I hope that we will all give our libraries support as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have our next speaker, please? Could you fill out a card, give it to the clerk, please? Thank you. Hi, Victoria Torres, Beverly Hills. I'm here also about the taxes going up. Um, I, I just moved here eight months ago and bought the house, and 
my insurance just went up also. <laughs> I live on Social Security because I am disabled. So I cannot afford for the taxes to start going up and my insurance going up. So I'm here to see if this could be under control. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Tracy Edgman from Hernando. And about a year ago or earlier this year, I came and addressed this very issue about the LGBT. And the, um, one of the things that I had mentioned was the drag queen story hours. Now, I've heard a lot of stuff. I, I'm one of your last speakers deliberately because I wanted to hear what other people had to address. And they say that there is no drag queen story hour here in Citrus County. But there is those very story hours happening in Ocala right now at the Starbucks. And um, so it's getting really, really close. Okay, I mentioned I'm starting back out in California and how it's moving eastward. And it's here, it's in our backyard. It may not be here in Citrus County as of today, but it will be here soon. It doesn't matter if it happens at the library or where it may happen, it is coming to Citrus County. Now we all know, as has been mentioned, you know, we hit national news all over the social media, not just Facebook and your Twitter accounts, but there's other media sites in which the Inverness account of the trans man who pretends to be a woman goes around and he molests multiple children and he was arrested here in Inverness. And you want to continue to deny that this is happening. And it doesn't matter whether it's happening on the streets or not, it is happening in every aspect of this county. Not only that, but we also had the Diva Night fundraiser just a year or so ago that was sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and sponsored by the Chronicles. Now you tell me what man, any one of the men sitting up here or in the back behind me that can actually understand what a woman goes through with breast cancer. So to say that that influence is not in this county and is not being exploited, you're wrong because all of this is targeted towards the children. Whether you want to acknowledge it or not, it is happening. And remember, this is an election year, even if you're not up for election. We are more aware today than we have ever been in this country about what is going on and what our elected officials are and are not doing. So we're not just asking you, we expect you to do what is right by the children. I don't care what your personal attitude may be or your personal opinion as an adult may be go you live your life how you want but leave the children alone how many more times do we have to ask you before we actually get more upset and everyone in this room should be upset that multiple children got molested by an agenda that claims to be okay and ch claims not to be harming and going after the children. Leave them alone. Thank you. Please don't applause. Please don't apply. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Kathy Bryn, um, home Sassa. And uh, I was preparing and thinking a lot and praying a lot. And I believe that each one of you really care about our children and I believe everybody on the library board and the head of the library board and everyone in our county does however the thing that came to my mind as a Christian as an author as um, books influence people they're written to influence people and we know that we are a conservative county and we're a small county and we love it that way that's why we're all here but um, the Bible says that beware of um, wolves in sheep's clothing. And my concern is only with the support of the American Library Association. I think that a lot of these national organizations, so much in Washington, D.C., so much in our country, have um, influenced and moved their subtleties into really good organizations. I love our libraries. We have some of the best that I've ever been to, and I support them 100%, but I would really appreciate it if you would add 
a sentence or two about that so that even though the good parts of the American Library Association can be followed, et cetera, et cetera. But we do need to stop this because this is creeping into our society. What adults decide to do, it's up to them. I have no qualms. I'm not um, condemning anyone for what they do or what they believe. But our children are precious. And they do learn in the library, and they're taught to learn in the library. They're taught to participate in library and to read. And I don't mind those books in the library for parents who want to share them with their children. But they shouldn't be put on display for everyone else. And I just really think this is an important issue, and it's really careful how we word the policy that will govern the library systems to keep them safe and that we don't want any wolves in sheep's clothing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak at this time? Anyone else? Third and final time. Okay, I'm closing public input. Uh, before the commissioners respond, I just want to say a couple of general things, especially the ones that kind of singled me out. Um, uh, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, I know we don't expect you all to get up at 8 o'clock in the morning and come here, but we had a budget meeting this morning. So those of you that expressed concerns about the sheriff's budget, that was hammered out for hours this morning, okay? Uh, and I'll just give you an update. We're waiting for feedback, but this board was unanimous pretty much in this, this summation, and that was we told the sheriff we will back 100% whatever raises he wants to give current sworn deputies and 911 to bring them up to the pay standard that he thinks he needs to bring them to to keep them. Please don't applaud. <laughs> okay, number two. Um, we also said that uh, the, there's 13 vacant positions right now. Somebody came up and said there's were 48 down. The sheriff says he, he would like to have up to 48 more deputies. We are not down 48 from the previous year, okay? We're down 13. Uh, so we told him we'll fund for those 13 and also at the approved budget request. We did not agree to 22 new deputies this year. What we said was this, and we summa the summation mine was this that the citizens said they will pay whatever it takes to keep our deputies here, but they want to see that they stay here. So if we pay the deputies what the sheriff says we need to pay them, we should not have any more deputies leaving, and we should have a line at the door for the 13 empty positions, okay? If that, in fact, happens, and then the sheriff says he's got a whole bunch of other applicants he'd like to look at, we invited him back during the year to say, hey, uh, let's talk about hiring another one or two deputies and we'll phase in this additional 48. So that was kind of the compromise. But the reason we had to continue it is we have to set the tentative tax rate before the 4th of August. So uh, we're still waiting on numbers to come back from the sheriff so we can finalize those numbers today. If not, we may have to have a special meeting. So the number one thing you need to take away from this, Citrus County is safe. We asked the sheriff, is Citrus County safe? safe? His answer was yes, okay? Do we want it to maintain to be safe? Absolutely, and we don't want our deputies now to be able to leave and go get paid more anyplace else. So I believe this board, in total agreement, went forward with that direction today, okay? So again, it's the same thing. We want, we want to preserve what we have. We know we can't fund every request of every constitutional, but we're trying to you know, find compromise where we can. So that, that deals with the sheriffs. And again, other board members may want to go into it. Let me address the gentleman about the canvassing board. Okay, here's another, another thing. You, you, er, there's a great saying, everyone's entitled to their own opinion but not to their own facts. Okay, so here's the facts. This gentleman came to the canvassing board with Judge Kearney and Judge um, Yearman sitting there and Commissioner Kennard and said, you know, you broke the law, you did this, you did that. And I said, I explained at the meeting that I did that before I was on the canvassing board, so did Commissioner Kennard, so did all the kind of commissioners. So if, if you're saying that anything we did prior to being appointed to the canvassing board excludes us, then you can't have a kind of commissioner on it because we all did that, okay? But since that time, as I pointed out to him, I have not endorsed any candidate, okay? Uh, then it was pointed out that uh, Representative Masulo, those of you that keep wanting to put Z's in his name, there is no Z's in Masulo, okay? So Representative Masulo called me and said, 
hey, I think there's some uh, misunderstanding here. I didn't mean to cause you any embarrassment. I'm going to pull that ad down off of Facebook or whatever. And again, in all fairness, I think we all endorsed him back in October or, you know, you know whatever it was. So when you do something in the past, I know there's people running for office today that say they're Republicans, but we're always Democrats. Would you like to go back and have everything you said before you were running for office played back to you about what you had to say? Okay. So just keep that in mind. People can, people are moving forward with this and people, when, when somebody asks them something, but from a certain point in time, then you can't go back and change that. So when you say that we are unethical, <clears throat> we have no morals and all these other things, I would just point out to you that you had two sitting judges there and a supervisor of elections and they said, your argument's not with us. So I think I've put that to bed. Hopefully, Commissioner Kennard, we won't hear any more. I, I doubt that. Mm -hmm. I doubt we have heard the end of that. One other thing here, again, uh, gas taxes and pushing, fixing the roads down the road. If you were at the budget meeting today, if you've been paying attention, we are adding how much to the millage rate? Half, um, half? Two, two, two tenths of a mil for roads. Two tenths of a mil every year, which in five years will get us the full funding. Okay? So people shake their head. Oh, that's not much. That's enough. Okay? So at that rate, there'll be enough money in the budget in five years to fully fund road resurfacing at the 20-year schedule. So if you're going to come up and make statements that we're kicking the can down the road, please have accurate information. Sure, we can do that, but at least accuse us of something that we've done. Okay? Here's the other thing. If the referendum that the board in the future may approve to go on the ballot that says we would like to have a half cent sales tax uh, for road resurfacing, then that two tenths of a mill will come off the tax bill. Okay, so it's one or the other, but we can't sit around and wait to fix the roads while we wait to see what the citizens decide. So just, just so you're clear on that. Um, we are getting a Baker Act facility. Okay, do I, does anybody not say? So when you come up and say, we need a Baker Act facility, yes, that's why we're getting one. So we should be aware of that. Okay. Um, and also, I'm going to address all the budget, or excuse me, all the library comments when we get to the library, uh, which, which was a large amount. So again, we're not going to make everybody happy about everything. Um, but I, And again, I'm not going to sit up here and defend myself and people tell me, you're not going to miss me, whatever. Um, I would say, if you look at the last election results, I would say that you're in the minority. Okay, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so who would like to go next? Yes, yeah. Commissioner Schleiber. Thank you. Um, you. Covered a lot. I do want to address Beverly Hills. I'm the one that um, made the statement about the four people, what happens with the 252 times four. My neighbor on DeSoto had five people in their house. So I've lived in this area for almost 29 years. I know Beverly Hills. And there, that's an increase for the MSBU that has never been done. I really, really like lost sleep over increasing that because I have voted down the last three tax increases because I know my citizens in Beverly Hills and how tight it is for them. And it would, it's going up $6. There's 10,265 people in Beverly Hills. That's an increase of $61,000, $61,590, not 30 million. It's $61,000. And like I said, I lost sleep over that $6 increase because $6 means a lot to my isolated elderly or my single parent. And I, I, I lose a lot of sleep over my Beverly Hills and Citrus Springs. So just know that when I say something, I don't just say it off the top of my head. I know the area. I do my research. So, um, and I'm going to continue to fight for Beverly Hills. And there's something on the agenda today that is, is, uh, is um, making me lose some sleep about. Um, so then going to Citrus Springs, um, you know, I appreciate the, the, the young adults moving in there, and I'm so thankful. And, Citrus Spring is coming up, and, and, and hearing the teachers that have five lots and 2,000 acre, I was hoping you could tell me what do we have in practice for that, Randy? If We're required this, by law. Yes, this, yes. This is a settlement of a lawsuit. It's called the Topeka Agreement. 
we run a line down anybody within a certain distance uh, a builder somebody building a house is uh, permitted to if they're within that distance uh, require us to run water to their lot under ordinance uh, anybody that it passes by it connects and they get assessed is two thousand dollars a lot if they own five lots however if they combine those lots uh, which they may or may not want to do depending on what they want to do in the future if they combine those lots into one lot then uh, they would only pay two thousand dollars once but if they do that they can't ever break them back up so that may not be a, a wise decision Yes, I think the county attorney has something she wants to add. And I, and I don't know if they are able to do that in Citrus Springs. Okay. And um, I just wanted the public to hear that, and it's unfortunate. And um, lawsuits call, cost each one of us in the state of Florida $6,000 a person. Um, so when you see those, uh, I got a million dollars from such and such, it hurts us all. Um, so... Um, Finally, workforce housing, we need it, we need it, we need it. We're gonna age out. We're, that's also gonna be at 501. You might wanna be here for that. It's gonna be um, interesting. Um, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> it's gonna be, you know, I can't talk about it, but we, we will address that at 501. And thank you, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Davis, any comments? Um, I'll cover a few things. Um, Commissioner Schlebaugh handled uh, water lines and staff. Um, and then also, I, I am also worried about the Beverly Hills folks. 50 cents a month is what it comes out to. And 50 cents a month is a lot for some people. Um, and I just don't see any way around it. So I support you in your agony and, and uh, leanings on that. Um, Mr. Oliver. Um, Ms. Barrett brought up West Citrus Springs Boulevard. Has anybody looked at that? Because this is the I made a note. I didn't third time I think I've heard I, about it. So. I don't know the answer to that. I'll take a look. Um, Mr. Otis, impact fees. Let's see. Stewart is uh, sewer is state mandate. Um, I do agree. Where is Mr. Otis? Is he still here? There you are. Um, I agree with you that it's incredibly inefficient. It drives me nuts that we have all houses half built out in a neighborhood. They invest in a well and they invest in septic and then the county comes through and they have to connect. It is a state mandate, we have to do that. Ideally, we would start with greenfields, <laughs> greenfield developments where we would actually have all that stuff built out. But um, oddly enough, all of the grant funding, of course, is tied to taking, um, you know, getting our uh, aquifer clean. So the, the grant funding is aimed at reducing what we put into the aquifer so it's a it's a horrible catch-22 situation to be in but I agree with you it drives me nuts on the inefficiency of it um, and mr. Gilbert um, I concur with uh, Commissioner Schlebaugh about 501 tonight with workforce housing um, and I absolutely say you are so correct that we have much bigger issues to worry about like 25.6% children living in abject poverty and 56% in one of our zip codes living in poverty, children. 80% on free and reduced lunch, lack of workforce housing, road resurfacing, sheriff's budget. We are so inundated with huge, huge issues. So I would also, um, I would say that I've come to realize that a political spectrum is not linear, it's circular. And the two, the left and the right end up, you know where they, what they have in common? They just want to control the rest of us in the middle. So, I'm tapping out. Okay. Commissioner Kennard. Yeah, I was looking to see if Connie was still here. I don't know if she's still in the audience or not, but Connie, if you're paying attention, it's good to see you out and about and healing up nicely. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Hancock, I would think that, Randy, we can address the speed limit issue, or speed limit signage issue on 486, correct? I would think we can take a look at that. We can take a look at that. I've got that on my list. Very good. And uh, he mentioned again the homeless camps popping up, I believe it was in Crystal Manor. Uh, we, have, we have got to stay after that to uh, 
we need people to report them to us because remember I can't initiate a code violation on my own it's got to be initiated by a person okay all right well, hopefully mr. Hancock's still in the audience and he can That's report right them get us an address um, we'll get somebody to go out there and take a peek uh, let's see John and Bridget the water connections water connection is actually a local ordinance uh, but it is a covenant in the uh, utility bonds I don't like the idea either but that's not going anywhere uh, sewer connection mandatory connection is state statute and I think that's all that I had to address let me see here uh, the East Citrus uh, soccer contract is on here I don't see I mean, could be surprised but I don't see any reason at this point why that won't get approved and signed today is somebody else Mr. Today. Davis Yes, I just wanted to apologize for Mr. Hancock. I actually had a note in here to say, I'm sure staff can follow up with that. I think it was Bluebell that you said that the speed limit sign on. But also just to lighten the mood a little bit, we see some fun t-shirts up here. Yours is my favorite of the day so far. Grumpy old vet. <laughs> he borrowed that from me. <laughs> Are you a vet? <laughs> okay, let's see. So we've addressed that. Now we're gonna move on to the 130 time certains. We're going to deal with a few of those and then we'll jump back to the regular agenda. So if you hear about the library board, that'll be coming up very, very shortly. That's the one of the first things under regular business. So we're going to open a public hearing about the Sister Springs assessment area, which we did hear a little bit about. And we're going to conduct a public hearing and then we're going to uh, deal with a resolution. Is that correct, Madam Attorney? So. Yes, sir. Okay. So how do you want to do this? We want to just you want to have a, somebody tell us what it's about. It's not an ordinance, so we don't need to read it. Is that correct? No, sir. We're just asking you to conduct a public hearing to consider the imposition of a special assessment for the provision of water distribution facilities within Citrus Springs 2022 assessment area for the upcoming year. Okay. And this is only for the areas of water lines were run in front of the property. Okay, so just everybody understands that this is dealing with some of the issues that the, uh, that the folks had mentioned about water lines in front of the property. So that said, we're going to open up uh, this uh, public hearing and hear what folks have to say either in favor or opposed to this resolution. So is anyone here to speak either in favor or opposed? I'd invite you to queue up if you are because it's going to be a long day. So Yes. Mm -hmm. Janet Barrick, Citrus Springs for Citrus Springs. When Citrus Springs was founded, it's a PUD, a planned unit development. The developer was to put water lines and the county was to do this and that. That was part of the deal. Water lines to every individual platted piece of land. Now, I know that we've gotten behind, the county has gotten behind because Mr. Cheek hasn't been able to do it as fast as our houses are being put in there because I know there are sections where the builders have to put in a well and they are supposed to be telling the new homeowner or the buyer that when the water line comes down the street they have one year to hook up to it we worked very diligently I should say the people in the 60s worked very diligently to make sure clean water would be accessible to every individual house every platted piece of land. Now, if you have five pieces of land, maybe you want it, there must be for an investment because they're individually platted for single family houses. Okay, that's what our deed restrictions say. Single family house, not buildings and whatever's that people keep trying to throw up at us, you know, and they have to try and get special approval and then they get upset when they can't get it. But the water needs to come down, and it has to come down. But they don't have to pay the 2001 shot, from what I understand. They're given time and time payments to pay off that 2000 per land or whatever it is per piece of property. And yes, yeah, some of our properties are a lot bigger because some are .23, some are .33, some are .51. They're not all the same, but they are platted, single family individual home. And if you want to have more land, then yes, it's going to cost you more. We have a housing project going in currently with Habitat for Humanity. They are getting city water, city sewer at every one of those houses. 
Not a single thing has been complained about for that. The builder knows the expense. It's incorporated in whatever they're doing. Wells are nice, but when the electric goes out, it's kind of hard to get water out of your well. I lived in a place where we had a well, and as soon as the water came down, we paid to have it hooked up. And yes, it's one, lot, one price for down the street and another price to have it hooked up by the plumber. So it's not just the 2000 They're eventually going to have to have it hooked up to the house. Because I think that's also part of the deal, if I'm not mistaken, that they have to be hooked up because when they bought the house with the well, they were told that when it comes down the street, you have one year. So if the builder's not telling them that, that's not your fault. And it's not our fault as a civic association. We do know the rules, and there are rules out there. Thank you. So are you in favor or opposed to the special assessment for the provision of water distribution? In favor of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there anyone else here to speak in favor or opposed to this resolution? Anyone else to speak in favor or oppo opposition? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, board, what is your pleasure with this resolution? Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion that we approve this. Second. Okay, B and C? Yes, sir. Okay, we've already done A, so it's uh, H1, B, and C approved. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Kennard makes that motion. Who seconded it? I did. Okay, and Commissioner Carnahan seconded it. We've had public comment. Is there any further board discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Okay, we can move on to the H2, which is the public hearing. This is the certification of the fiscal year 2022-23 Beverly Hills MSBU assessment roll. Uh, correct me, we're going to have a public hearing. This is about the properties on the roll, right? This is not about the rate. Right. Is that correct? Correct. We get nods of head from correct. everybody over there. Okay. So, just so we know what it's about, this is the roll. This isn't debating what the fee is at no, this point in time. rate resolution also. Right? Where's the rate? Is there a rate resolution? B, B is the rate resolution. The final rate that we've already <coughs> talked about and advertised, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. So, th with that said, I'm going to open this up for discussion about the resolution adopting and certifying role and the final rate resolution for the Beverly Hills MSBU. Is anyone here to speak in favor or opposed to this? Perhaps at the beginning <laughs> you could tell us if you're in favor or opposed. And then I'm opposed to it. Okay. Okay. Now. Could you tell us who you are again? My first record? name is Janet Barrett. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now we got that out of the way. In 2001, it was a referendum that was put out to the citizens of Beverly Hills. It did not go through without. It wasn't flying colors. Oh, we want an MSBU. Okay. Now you got an MSBU because it did pass in 2001. Five people are on that board. They're not voted on by the residents. They are picked by you, all right? So now five people are going to tell you that it's okay to give a 62.5% increase in the MSBU. 62.5%, okay, granted, it's only $6. Only $6 when gas is at $4. The $6 is not going to be easy for some of the people. I'm not saying everybody, but for some of them in Beverly Hills. And people approached me because I have a big mouth. <laughs> okay? And they can't be here, but they said, this is not fair. And I said, well, then I'll get up there and I'll say something. My mother and father-in-law moved into Beverly Hills in 71. So I know what I'm talking about. And it's not like I just moved here yesterday. Okay? They didn't want the MSBU to go like Citrus Springs for this and this and this and this. It only has a very limited scope. Plants and helping people mow grass if they have to. There's only a couple of things on there, okay? It's not that they need another $61,000 to do this. However, they're probably getting top heavy with the quest that the county is charging just like Citrus Springs is getting top heavy with the MSBU charges that we have to pay the county for administrative fees, for having somebody from Citrus County there at the meeting, to have somebody from Citrus County taking the minutes, you know, transcribing this, typing this. 
okay? And it's not fair to do this without asking the residents, do you want an increase? And if so, what would you like for the increase? And no, a lot of people don't go to MSBU meetings. Believe me, I did go to one or two for Beverly Hills because I wanted to see how theirs was compared to ours. And it's just about the same. You have the meeting at nine o'clock on a day that nobody cares about, just like the meetings here. You have the meetings here at one o'clock in the afternoon. There's a lot of people who would love to come to a meeting. I'd love to be able to go to a school board meeting. It's at four o'clock today. I can't be in two places at once. So I am definitely opposed, and so are the people that asked me to come up and say this. And I could give you some names if you'd like names and give you addresses. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak in favor or opposed to this resolution? Anyone else? Third and final time. Okay, I'm a close public uh, hearing, but just a final reminder. Um, I can tell you that we have been inundated by a particular community in Citrus County about their feelings on an issue. So when somebody stands up here and says, well, everybody cares about this, and we get zero emails about it, I wouldn't call that being inundated. So um, we, we have a pretty good pulse about the people that contact us with what their concerns are. So it's great that, that you share your concerns with your neighbors, but if you want them to have an impact, you need to send your county commissioners an email, okay? That, that's, that's what we need it for. Okay, so with that said, we're looking for a motion now, I guess, to adopt H2B. That's all I see here that we need to do on this one. Mr. Since Chair, we've motion that, to approve item H2B. Okay. Since, is that correct? We've already done the public hearing. That's all yes, we need. We okay, so Commissioner Kennard makes that motion. Waiting patiently for a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Davis. Notice I talked in the kind of the third person there. So, okay. <laughs> We've had the public hearing. Commissioners, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Nay. Okay, we have a four to one on that. Do you have that uh, recorded here, ma'am? Thank you. Okay, let's go to item H3, the public hearing proposed habitat at Citrus Springs, phase one assessment area. This is a street lighting district that uh, they asked for, habitat okay. asked for. Okay, so at, have, just so everyone knows, habitat's asked for a street lighting district, which means they're assessed a little bit each year on their property bill that only they pay for this, correct? That's correct, and they get a service that we don't offer other uh, places outside of a street lighting district. Okay, we're all good on that. So, this time we will open the public here. Oh, wait a minute, there's no, this again, too, is a, we don't need, there's a resolution, right? So we don't need to read anything with this, right? No, we don't need to read anything. Just conduct the public hearing, then B and C. Okay, so we are going to open this for people to speak in favor or opposed to the special assessment. Is there anyone here to speak in favor or opposed? Okay, anyone to speak in favor or opposed? It took me a little longer. Janet Barrick, Citrus Springs. We are in favor of this. Thank you. See how short that was? It was. <laughs> Very good. Is there anyone else to speak in favor or opposed to this? Okay, third and final time. Okay, we're going to close the public comment. Commissioners, what is your pleasure with this? If you want to approve it, we'd be looking for H3, I believe B and C. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve H3, B and C. Second. Okay, Commissioner Slaybaugh makes a motion, second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any other board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. And H4. This is to conduct a uh, public hearing to vacate platted utilities on lots 1, 2, 27, and 28 of block 154, lots 421, uh, 4 through 21, block 143, Unit number three of the Home Assassa, of Home Assassa. Uh, the utility companies that serve the area have no objection, and staff uh, and the agencies have reviewed it and recommend approval. Thank you. And just again, I've had, I don't know how many people ask me, what does a street vacation mean? Does that mean people are living on the street during vacation? I go, absolutely not. But perhaps somebody could give a brief explanation to the public what we're doing. This is just vacate the utility easements, meaning that the utility had a right to put uh, utilities down that particular easement. Uh, when there's an easement like that, nobody can build on that easement or encroach upon that easement. 
I don't know what's planned for this, but they've asked that it be vacated and the utilities have no objection. Okay, so there we have the background. We're going to open this now for a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak in favor or opposed to this? Please, please come up, man, if you're here to speak. H4? H4, yes, ma'am. This is PV-22-01 for Brian and Regina DeWitt. Right. My name is Caroline Austin, and I live next door to this property. Um, it's a very sensitive wetland, and it is highly subject to flooding. Um, if this is opened and they bring in any kind of fill or anything, it's going to flood me out. I've lived there since 02, and it's been up to my back door before. Uh, that whole area is highly suggestive to flooding. And if y'all will let me approach, I'll show you something. You can give that to the clerk. If you well, I have to keep this. I was just going to show it to Then you. you'll have to make a copy and share with oh, us. Okay. So, okay. okay. Um, but anyway, I, please, we need more study before it is allowed to do this because I don't know what I'll do if my home is flooded out. Okay. And I thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you very much for being here. Could you fill out a green card for the clerk, please? Uh, is there anyone else here to speak in favor or opposed to this? By the way, while the next speaker is coming up, I, Mr. Oliver, correct me, but this ha any development issues are still in place, right? That any, is correct. That, Anybody is who would do anything to this particular property would be required to get the necessary permits. I mean, they just couldn't go in there and, you know, right. put in a road or raise the fill five feet or whatever. Right. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Billy Sala. And I'm also a neighbor in that same area that we're discussing right now. I live across the street from Mrs. Austin. Um, I have some photos on my phone that I would like you to be able to look at. Is it possible that you could you, do that? You would need to email them to us. We, in the interest of time, we don't have time to do that. And plus, anything you show us that may make us make a decision needs to be in the record so other people could well, come in and say. <laughs> I understand, but I, I also understand that you're going to probably vote on this and make a decision now. So I'm not going to have time to email this to you. Could you just look at this one photo? Could, did you understand what I said earlier, though? Whether or not the property floods now or in the future has nothing to do with the decision we're going to make today. Okay. Okay? Well, just, just so you're clear on that. <laughs> let me just put this forth to you for, for your consideration. Okay. Um, I am opposed to this. I'm requesting that the easement not be vacated at this time until there's some further study on the program. Uh, or on the flooding in that area because it is crucial. We already have a lot of flooding problems. The property on the side of the road that um, the people would like to build on is higher than Mrs. Austin's property next door and mine across the street and most of the other neighbors. It's my understanding that in order to build on that property, they have to raise the elevation of the property by a foot or two. If that easement is vacated and they're allowed to fill right out to the perimeters of the property, then that water would have no place to go but downhill. That would be Mrs. Austin's property and my property. You know, I've been there 40 years and I am hoping that I am going to die on my property and I hope it won't be from drowning. So I was hoping that you would take this into consideration and understand that those of us who have invested our hard-earned dollars and our entire lifetimes into the property here um, would be forced into a very difficult situation just by this simple act of a, the easement being vacated right now. So I'm going to ask that the chair would not be authorized to execute the res resolution opposing this uh, uh, P PV 2201 at this time until it can you can look into it a little bit further and you can fully see the consequences to the homeowners surrounding that property. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And, and once everybody's done speaking, we'll ask the staff to address comments and questions that they've heard. So we'll give All you a little right. more background. Thank, Thank you. you. Is anyone else here to speak in favor or opposed to this? And if you would, when you're done speaking, if you'd fill out a green card for the clerk. Sure will. Yeah. Uh, my name is Regina DeWitt and my husband, Brian. We are the applicants. Um, we only plan on building a single family home, 1,500 square feet. 
and it's not actually going to be anywhere near the easement. Um, we just thought it was in our benefit to clear title to the land before we started building a house on it. And we're only looking at about a 40 foot setback from the road. It's going to be nowhere near the easement. Do you have okay. any other questions? Uh, we don't. I don't. <laughs> yes. This is your turn. We're just listening to public input. We will have discussion okay, yeah, after this. We've okay. owned the property since December of 2020 and have gone up there several times to mow and just check it out. And I've never, again, I, it's higher, I guess, than theirs, but we've never seen any flooding issues on it. I, I would just point out to you, this is your opportunity to say whatever you want. So if you want to address the concerns that other people have done, this would be the time to do it. So. And, and could you stand by the microphone so everybody can hear? Yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today. Uh, we spent many, many, many years looking forward to moving to Citrus County and uh, look forward to, uh, to building our home here. <clears throat> to our neighbors, uh, we have not met. I guess you're on the other side of Ben Lane, not on the... Could, the could you address us, please, sir? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, but to their concerns, sir, and, and you've already mentioned this, what we're asking for has absolutely zero to do with what their concerns are and nothing that we're going to do to develop the property uh, is going to affect them in a negative manner. So thank you very much, and I, as I said, I uh, look forward to, uh, to living here. Thank you. Great, thank you. Is there anyone else to speak in favor or opposed to this, uh, this application? Anyone here speak in favor or oppose? Third and final time. Okay, we're gonna close the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Oliver or anybody, would you wanna address that? I see Joanna is sitting there. Perhaps she wants to touch base on it. No problem, yeah. Um, as you probably heard from the applicant, they're aware there's wetlands on this site. There is some flood zone. They are planning on one home. The vacate itself won't uh, mitigate or enhance flooding. I mean, those issues are still going to be there. They're still going to have to meet all building code requirements and stormwater requirements if necessary. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Yes, ma'am. I know this answer, but I'm going to ask it for people at home or in the audience. Um, this this neighborhood has been platted out and established and this lot that they're talking about was meant to have a home built on it um, so what what would we do to stop something like that this is a private land use they can build a, a house without the easement vacation that you, that's before you today I think that's what you're asking there's a whole bunch of platted lots they're combining them together to make a, a, a usable lot for themselves but um, the utilities have all signed off on the easement that they have no need for it. But without this vacate, as you've heard from the applicant, they still could build a house here. It's residential. But what I, I guess what I'm asking you is this easement has, if it was vacated, has nothing to do with possible flooding that would be um, handled through the building department and codes and made, making sure that things were done properly correct right the easement just takes away the right for utility companies to run lines there nothing else okay any sure. other questions yes sir move to approve p uh, 84 pv 22-01 a and b okay second so we have a motion by commissioner carnahan and a second by commissioner davis is there any further board discussion okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed say nay that passes unanimously thank you everybody Okay, let's move back now. If we're going back. If you're following the scorecard, we're going to go to, I believe it's bids, which is. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Motion to approve item E1A through C. Second. Okay, so these are the bids for those following at home E1, A, B, and C. Commissioner Kennard makes a motion to approve, second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comments on? This motion, any further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. E2, please. Yes, a approved budget transfers for utilities, visitor and convention bureau, road maintenance, Beverly Hills MSBU land development, uh, benefit <laughs> plans, and human resources for fiscal year 21 22. Motion to approve item E2. Second. Commissioner Kennard makes that motion, second by <coughs> Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comments? All commissioners, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. E3, please. Yes, adopt and authorize the chairman to execute a resolution adopting amending transportation operations section 5307, 
County Fuel Expansion, Transportation Disadvantaged Trip and Equipment, Retired Senior Volunteer Program, Aquatic Plant Control, and State Housing Initiatives Partnership Grant Budgets for 21-22. Mr. Chairman, move to approve E3. Second. Okay, Commissioner Slebov makes the motion. Second by Commissioner Kennard. Is there any public comment? <coughs> Commissioners, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. It passes unanimously. E4 takes us to the library policies discussion. Uh, actually, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I don't know if you want to go into it, but um, my spin on it is that the commissioners in the past said we didn't know who set policy in the library. There was much confusion. It was determined that the county commissioners do. So we now have the new draft policies uh, 1 through 14 in front of us for approval. Is that where we are with this? Okay. So you're going to be looking for a motion to deal with, with these items. Uh, commissioners, I would like to uh, make a motion. Okay. I would like to see us adopt policy 01 through 14. But under 14, I would like the policy to include Display shall now not violate community standards, and there shall be no displays of sexual orientation. Second. So that was my motion, and um, I think it's reasonable because this is all I asked for before was that we didn't include any displays about any sexual orientation. It's clear and simple. Uh, not going to get into the ALA, whether it's bad, good, or indifferent, but this is what came up before, and I believe the uh, commissioners were concerned that it wasn't within our purview to set that policy. Now I believe it clearly is. So that's my motion, and it was seconded by Commissioner uh, Carnahan. Is there any public comment? Any public comment on that motion? And let's keep it limited to that motion, okay? Uh, yes, Commissioners, uh, can I ask for the five minutes could, again? Could, could yes. you give us your name? Yes, uh, my name is John Labriola. And we're under Lindness. a different section, so yes, you got, you got yes, five thank minutes you. before you get it. <clears throat> so. I, uh, first of all, uh, I agree with the motion, and I, I want to just go back to a comment made by, um, I think she was one of the uh, friends of the library. She said that uh, nobody objected uh, to any any aspect of the policy at the June, 20, uh, the June 28th li Library Advisory Board. I watched that video and that's not true. One of the board members um, actually objected to it. Um, and, uh, you know, she objected to the ALA, uh, you know, inclusion, but uh, specifically because the ALA promotes the pride displays. So I think that the motion would address that issue. Uh, but um, I think it was ironic that she said, oh, like, uh, why didn't they all show up at the library advisory board? after we packed the library advisory board you know a few months ago and they completely just ignored us and then um, we came before the library governing board um, with 31 uh, applications and all of them were rejected so i think it's and we were told also when we went to the library advisory board that the county commission sets policy go to them so i think we exhausted all the other you know uh, the things that uh, we, we were told to do, and that's why we're here before you today, because you are the policy setting board, not the library advisory board, as, as was made clear to us many, many times. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to ask if the chairman would allow uh, the materials that I brought up to be distributed so you can see, uh, see them before you vote. Uh, and would, would, that, would the chairman you, allow that? I, I was going to say, you can give them out, but mm -hmm. we're not going to be reading while we're listening to what everybody has to say. So oh, anything okay. that, any, and this goes for everybody, anything you want us to have, you need to get to us before the meeting so we have time. Well, then I would ask if, the, if those would be distributed, the, the ones I gave to, uh, handed to the clerk earlier. Oh, you got okay. them? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to give them out now? If the yes, folks want to read them now. That's yeah, so, um, because you've heard from several people this uh, afternoon about the American Library Association and what it's become over the years. It's not the same organization uh, from 1896 when it was founded, just like Disney is not the same organization it was, you know, when, when it was founded. And uh, far, uh, far left uh, ideologues have taken over, um, as you heard one of the earlier speakers mention, the uh, newly elected um, ALA president is a self-described, I'm not saying this about her, she says this about herself, 
is a self-described proud Marxist lesbian who wants to promote this particular agenda. Uh, and one of the artic the first one in your packets, it says, uh, um, amid, public amid public concern about grooming kids, American Library Association picks president who pushes queering of the libraries. Okay, uh, but you know, um, I, I think the the chairman's motion do does address that particular issue because it, it would um, override what the ALA is pushing. But um, you know, I think the the county commission needs to be very careful about wh what language that they put in the policy if it does have s some you know links in there that go to all kinds of stuff about drag queen story hour. If you look at the one that says intersections, this was on the ALA website, and you see pictures of drag queens, you know, who are reading to children. Um, and this is totally, you know, inappropriate. And one of the, one of the speakers did say, that, okay, we don't, you know, it's, we've been told, well, we don't have that in Citrus County yet. But if you don't put, if you don't put a stop to it now by putting specific language in the, in the policy that says we're not going to have any of this going forward, that's the only way you're going to keep it out in the future because, you know, they, they're, you know, as was said, the, the, the wolves are gathering all around us in Ocala is happening and the Diva Night, the Citrus County Chronicle uh, sponsors an annual event with drag queens. There's been a drag queen going around during the, uh, I don't know if you heard, during, during a lot of the candidate forums. Um, you know, uh, go, going around hounding one of the candidates for school board who's asked for an end to the, the cross-dressing policy that they have there. So it's, it's already coming right, you know, it, it's in our backyard already and it's here. And we don't want it in the libraries. It doesn't belong there. So uh, I would ask you all to please, uh, very, very, uh, very much to, to um, please promote, please support um, the chairman's motion. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak on this motion? Just come on. First one, first come, first serve. So if you fill out a, make sure you fill out a green card if you haven't uh, spoken yet today. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Anthony Wayne Mozo. <clears throat> I live at 465 North Kinglet in Citrus Hill. And there's a wolf in sheep clothing, all right, but it's these people here. It's Labriola and his people. And I would urge you to not vote for Commissioner Kitchen's motion. <clears throat> I believe that the library is appropriate in the way they do things. They have uh, recently renovated, or not renovated, but they've rewritten their policies. They're very good policies. There's even a grievance procedure. I'm supposed to address you. <laughs> there is a grievance procedure in there, and that's what it's for. If somebody has some type of objection to these particular displays, then go ahead, file this grievance procedure, and it's probably going to eventually come to you guys to do something about it. But I would leave it as, as it is. I have a lot of respect for Eric Head. I have a lot of respect for the library. I spend a lot of time in the library. Quite frankly, it's quiet there. People leave you alone unless you want help. And I enjoy it. Plus, there's a lot of great DIY magazines there. Now, when I, I grew up in Daytona, I was born and raised in Daytona, Port Orange, really. But I spent my formative years at Port Orange Baptist <coughs> Church. And these people cloak themselves in the Bible, and they cloak themselves in the flag, and I don't believe anything could be further from the truth. Because they don't understand precedent, they, under they don't understand what our Constitution says, that it's for everybody. If you're born in this country, and you don't commit a felony, then these rights are inalienable to you. You have those rights. That's not what they're saying. And I've heard a lot about the ALA today. That's new to me, because before it was all about this indoctrination and this reprogramming that's going on, and I don't believe that for a minute, you know? And, and going back to, to being raised in the church and in Port Orange, the Jesus I was taught about was called the Prince of Peace. And I fully believe in the inclusivity that Jesus has spoke about. I fully believe that if he were walking down the road with the apostles and he became, and he come to a gay couple or a lesbian couple, who has been ostracized, perhaps even stoned by their community, he's not going to say, get away from me. He's going to say, come on down, join us. You know, I'll show you my dad taught me how to change uh, water to wine later on. We're going to do that. Come on in and join us. He's not going to say, get away, you're off. You know, that's not going to happen. Not the way I was brought up. And I was brought up in a very rural church. And the, 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 the preacher that was there, he didn't have time for this stuff. 
It was all he could do to minister to the sick, to the poor, perform weddings, perform burials. That's all he had to do. And yet, these people are talking about wolves in sheep's clothing. They are the wolves. And Commissioner Davis was very right and were very correct in what she said earlier. The far right and the far left get what they want, and the rest of us in the middle don't get it. And this has got to stop. School board, supervisor elections. Thank you very much. Time has expired. Can we have the next speaker, please? Tracy Edgman, Hernando, uh, Florida. I do want to correct this. We're not wolves in sheep clothing and so on and so forth. And I don't agree that the far right and the far left get what they want, but the people in the middle don't. You know, it's been many decades since we've actually stood up and addressed this issue. And I do want to readdress one thing that was said earlier is that we have so many more important issues to deal with. And that is true, we do. We have a lot of issues that need to be dealt with, but there is nothing, absolutely nothing more important than our children. Again, those of us who have stood up here, I agree with um, Mr. Kitchen's proposal and however you say it. But I do want to make it very well clear. What you do as an adult is your decision. You're old enough to make up your mind. But when you go after the children in any way, shape, or form to take them and to set them up and sexualize them starting at the age of, of two years old, confusing them, doing all manners of things to them and setting them up to become children of sexualization and being human trafficked, sexual, uh, child trafficking, and so on and so forth. This is very well documented and you can sit and deny this all you want and it begins at every level. It's in the homes, in the children's sections. Sesame Street has been sexualized. Sesame Street of all things. And to deny this and to claim that, that Christians are the wolves in sheep clothing and you bring in Jesus, my goodness, Jesus said, please don't hurt the children. He said, if you hurt the children, then you are just as bad and you're worse than they get. And I'm paraphrasing there because I can't remember the actual verse. Okay, but the fact of the matter is, is Jesus did not agree with anyone harming the children at all. So to say the things that I have heard just right before me is just dumbfounding to me. But again, there is nothing more important than our children. And we are all, as adults, responsible for protecting them. And I don't care if you're heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual, lesbian, and whatever else. It doesn't make any difference. But you can't go after the children. If I, as a heterosexual, goes after one of the children and abuses one of the children and harms them, and tries to lead them down and astray, then I deserve to be in prison. And that's just a fact, and it doesn't make any difference. And, and no agenda is more special than the next. And you don't get to call us names and tell us that we hate people for telling you the truth, because there is no hate in truth. And you need to remember that, so. Thank you, time has expired. Can we have the next speaker, please? Hello, uh, Mr. Hancock again from uh, Crystal River. And on the commissioner's uh, proposal about the libraries, in regards to the last section where you're gonna have the A, or whatever acronym that is for the Library Association, has the library people looked at other avenues other than having this uh, drag queen storytelling hour? There are other viable options than having that in there. Go to the local VA clinics, put up notices, hey, we want to get people to come in and read. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody of the, excuse my language, the alphabet community. Bring in more upstanding people. If you want to influence the children, influence them properly, and bring them up to be decent citizens, bring in the right people. Now, I'm going to be a bit prejudiced saying that sometimes the drag queens or whoever else they may be in the alphabet community don't necessarily have the best intentions. There are citizens who don't have the best intentions. They need to be vetted. These kids are quite impressionable from a young age going forward. We do not need having somebody out there telling them that, oh, by the way, yeah, if a man and man go kissing in public somewhere, or a man gropes a child in public, 
that's okay, and it's not okay. I served 20 years in the Army to defend the Constitution, not a political party. And I'm not going to stand for having moral intepitude invade our children's lives. It needs to be stopped. It also needs to be added that the history books need not be changed because it hurts somebody's feelings. You know, it's a sad, sad story that the Battle of Bataan, it may be a paragraph in history books, whereas in the Philippines, children study an entire chapter of it. Let's put the history back where it belongs. Let's put the honor back where it belongs. Let's keep our children safe. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Okay. Hi, Commission. Donna Rummel again. Every single one of you knows what makes my heart beat. But I also know the children and the elderly need protection. The LBGQ and vanilla relationships are adult matter. Leave the kids out of it. Whichever way you swing, more power to you. Leave the kids out of it. Um, keep men out of the ladies' wet restrooms. You don't want to peek on me. And Ruthie, I'm just going to add this. We need workplaces before we need workhouses. We need work before we worry about homes. That's all. I thank you. Bye. Next, please. My name is Sandy Price, and I'm the president of the Friends of the Citrus <laughs> County Library System. Five? And I have one basic, oh. Five, five minutes. If I need it all. <laughs> um, Children do not go to the library without their parents. No two-year-old is going to go walking through the library and looking at any display. So when they talk about protect the children ad nauseum, uh, protecting children begins at home with the parents. And the parents take the children to the library and introduce them to books and reading and so on and so forth. As far as the ludicrous comment about drag queen story hour, I don't know where that came from. But that has never happened in Citrus County, and it will never happen in Citrus County. The third thing I'd like to say is the BOCC appointed the LAB. We submit our, our, our uh, what's the right word? We submit our why we should be appointed, and then you appoint us, and then we don't make policy, we make suggestions, and therefore you are gathering the input that we gave to you, so please adopt it. Thank you for your time. Hello, Terry Morrison again from Lecanto. My career experience includes a master's of library science, so extensive study in the library field, and I have 30 plus years of experience in various states and all levels of library from kindergarten to college. I have extensive experience in library policy. I'm going to ask that this board reject respectfully Commissioner Kitchen's policy, uh, or I'm sorry, motion, uh, with for the following reasons. First of all, the policy as submitted to you already contains a grievance procedure which will handle all the concerns that an individual might have about any library materials. So the concerns that people are expressing are already going to be addressed within this policy and therefore I feel the policy covers everything that we've had various discussions about over the last few months. In addition, the addition of the phrase sexual orientation is a very broad phrase and it's going to be subject to a lot of uh, perhaps lawsuits but also uh, disagreements about what that includes. So if we have no displays of sexual orientation and yet we have a marriage counseling display that talks about, would include books about the traditional form of marriage, is that a sexual orientation display? And so I think that's getting a little bit too broad and it's going to prevent your policies from having the desired effect, whereas the grievance procedure will handle what you need. So for those policy concerns, I suggest that you stick with the policy as submitted and not adapt the changes suggested. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Hi, my name is April McLaughlin. I'm the chairperson of the Library Advisory Board, your Library Advisory Board. We've gone over the policies and procedures as outlined and uh, given to you by Eric Head. Uh, they've been reviewed by legal 
and we've discussed each and every item at the past Library Advisory Board meeting. The Library Advisory Board um, consented and agreed with the um, policies and procedures as submitted, and we believe that those will um, cover everything that was asked for. Uh, we did not ignore the people that came to our meetings. We listened, and we have incorporated um, many of the items in a broad sense that would cover all the policies for um, books in the library, displays in the library, et cetera. Um, I just wanna say to uh, some of the people that have come before me that it is about the children. The library is sensitive to that. Um, children can only take out books with their parents' consent, with the parent's library card. Um, there is no, there are no children running amok in the library, we hope. And um, the uh, idea that we would have something that would be inappropriate or unacceptable to the citizens of um, patrons of our libraries in Citrus County, such as story hour with sexual orientation or something like that, just it won't happen, it hasn't happened, and it's not going to happen. Um, we think that you should accept the um, policies and procedures as submitted. Uh, we don't think that getting into the weeds with exclaiming that one specific type of book should not be displayed would be detrimental and would not have the desired effect. Uh, someone else could come up and say, well, you know, we don't like religion, so don't ever put a Christmas display out. And so it does cover those types of things if people would like to um, have a complaint or an issue. There's a grievance procedure, and we think that that is covered completely and we ask that you accept the uh, policies and procedures as submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, could you give us a form, please? Hi, Vicki Robinson Hernando. I want to go on record as saying I, I think that um, Commissioner Kitchen's suggestion um, is a sound one, and I think that it. Um, it's a reaching across the aisle in a really positive way that will, I think, resonate with a lot of the people who have been attempting over these last few months um, very earnestly to um, have our viewpoint heard, and it will protect um, a future mis misinterpretation and keep us from having to visit here again for um, the same kind of manner. So um, I am in support of what you're suggesting, Mr. Kitchen, and thank you very much. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? Janet Barrick for Janet Barrick. I think that having it say not to violate the community standards and have sexual orientation is a very good addition. However, I had made suggestions that you should also say that the displays should highlight positive things in Citrus County or Citrus County schools, what they're doing, because the display should make our students want to stay in Citrus County. They're learning stuff. Um, when you say not and never and yet, we just did a, a meet and greet the candidates in Citrus Springs. And yes, we had a transvestite come and try to semi-disrupt a good meeting, okay? So don't ever say not and never or yet because they are going to try and infiltrate. When we have an, an open event to the public, I have to now watch for certain things, okay? Um, parents do not always know what a book is about just by what's on the outside of the cover. So when you say that the parents have to approve the kid getting the book, sometimes the parent approves a book because they think that this is what it's about, but that's not what it's about. And I don't think every parent has read every book, whether it's on running or just jumping or whatever the topic is, or sexual orientation. So yeah, there have to be some guidelines for the displays. And I really think that adding the ad addendum is a very good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon again, uh, Janet Genova Hernando. 
I'd just like to go on record stating that I do not agree with Commissioner Kitchen's proposition to add those additional items for one thing. It's very subjective. Um, and as stated before, there is a grievance procedure within the policy. If there is any issue with anything, there's a proper procedure to go through. And one more item, I was at the LAB meeting and there was absolutely no public input when we, when the policies were described and reviewed and gone over. There was no public input. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the next speaker, please? It's Mary Cedar. I feel like I almost hate to share this with you because what I have to share with you is so bad, I'm going to look bad for telling it. Well, if you can just stick to the motion, okay. that might help. I, I'm okay. in. <laughs> There's a man by the name of Alfred Kinsey, and he was on the Phil Donahue talk show, and he did a study, of, uh, and he did a sex study on children two months old to four years old. And it was how many, uh, okay, how many, uh, yeah, arousals each child could get. And the four-year-old got 26 in 24 hours. This man is Albert Kinsey, and he was a parent. You know that? He had three children, yet he practiced homosexuality. He practiced open marriage. He practiced everything. So just because they're a parent and they bring their child, I'm sorry, what's wrong is wrong. What's bad is bad. It's evil. And thank you, Mr. Kitchens, very much, and Mr. Carnahan. I don't, and the other three, I hope you will please consider the, the kids. That's what we're asking. Thank you. Thank you. Could we have the next speaker, please? Is there another speaker? There we go. Okay, it's all right. Yeah, I wanted to talk again about um, the information that's getting into the libraries and the schools. Did you give us your name? Diane I'm Campbell. Okay, I'm sorry. And um, I don't think any of this information about sexuality in any way has ever been a prereq for, for college, for jobs, for anything like that. I don't know why we're even thinking about teaching it to begin with. That's what our parents are for. That's why they had the children, not the librarians, not anybody else, but the parents had those children. Nobody else was present. They had the right to teach their children what sexuality is about. Not our schools, not our libraries, and that's not a re prerequisite for college or to even get in, in, in any good job, for crying out loud. Why is all this such a big deal now? They didn't have the, they didn't have the children to have these rights to do this to them. And I don't think it's fair. I really, really don't. I've been through this. I have five granddaughters, and one of them decided to be a boy. I still <laughs> love her to death, but it's, I think if things were handled differently, it may not have happened. And all this is getting so blown out of proportion. We don't need this. It's just, we, it wasn't there when I was growing up, that's for sure. Why do we need it now? So anyway, I just I thank you for thank the rules you want to put in place. I think they're, they're good. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Uh, yes, Greg Huang, Floral City. Um, to those um, that want to try to tell us that the sexuality of kids are taught by our parents, I, I have to say they're fooling themselves because it's everywhere. It's on TV, it's in movies, it's in social media, and it is in our libraries, and we need to draw the line. And again, I'd like to encourage everyone here to go to the American Pediatrics, or I'm sorry, American College of Pediatrics website and study what they have to offer. 
And um, I'd also just like to say in closing, isn't it better to teach a child to be happy with the body and the mind and the gifts that they were given by our Lord rather than try to teach them that they can be something that they're not? Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. No applause, please. Mary Ann Parker, Home Assassin. I just want to say I agree with Commissioner Kitchen's motion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else to speak? I can't see behind the poll over there. So no, is no. there good. any? OK, no final comments on this motion. OK, so we're going to close the public, uh, public discussion of this. Commissioners, here's what I would like to do. I'm going to, give, I'm going to start. And we have, since I made the motion, Commissioner Carnahan a chance to speak then. Do one final pass, what you guys want to say, and then I'm going to ask the uh, clerk to give us a roll call vote on this. So just so we're clear, my motion was to accept virtually every policy provided to us, 1 through 14, and ask for one new paragraph to be inserted, okay? Not throwing it out, okay? That would say, display shall not violate community standards, and there <coughs> should be no displays of sexual orientation. I have been besieged with take out the ALA, take out transgender, take this out, take that out. So in my mind, commissioners, uh, this is a compromise. This is saying, and, and what I'm looking at, and I'll, I'll wait for all the discussion here to die down. What I'm looking at here is look at our audience. We have been divided as a community for how long now? And it's been about this issue of sexual orientation. Nobody is banning any books. Nobody is saying we can't have these books in the library. Nobody is telling teachers. So let's forget about all the smoke and mirrors. And I've heard at least two speakers twist my words mm -hmm. so that I didn't even understand what I had said. So I had to go back and look at it. What I've heard is the typical liberal process of let the experts decide. You are not the experts. We have to let the experts decide. As far as I'm concerned, the people that elected me are the experts in their community. That's who I'm listening to. I might not satisfy everybody, but I'm listening to what they have to say. I don't agree with everybody on everything all the time. I think this is a fair compromise. And keep this in mind. Let's, let's go back to this debate. Why do we do displays? Why does a bookstore do a display? Oh, we're not trying to motivate anybody to buy that book, are we? No, that's why they put things on display. They're trying to draw attention to what it is they're doing. Whether it's good, bad, whether you like the book or not, it doesn't matter. So all I'm saying is displays are there for a purpose. We can display whatever they want, but it should not violate community standards and uh, deal with <coughs> sexual orientation. So the question comes back to who decides community standards? We do, we do. the five of us. Okay, this debate started when we got into a debate where we could just say, oh, we don't set that policy. We let other people who aren't elected decide for us. And this board said, no, that's not the way we operate. It comes back to us. So with that said, keep this in mind. This policy can change, okay? Commissioners change, commissions change, policy changes, okay? We, and the, what the job of the county commission is, is to listen to the sentiment in the community, try to understand what those community standards are. We are, if this is inserted, this infringes on nobody's rights. I, I would just, I heard, didn't see a single person stand up and tell me where if we don't have a display on any sexual orientation, how anybody's rights are violated. That, I just don't see that argument, okay? It's not about right or left, and it's not about religion, okay? Taxpayers have told me, have every book in the library that the library board wants to have there. Just don't put them out there trying to get attention drawn to a particular subject that half or more than half of the community have a problem with. That's all we're trying to do. Somebody said, we have a grievance procedure. Well, yeah, that was ignored. That's why it's back in front of us again. Person stood up, said, here's our grievance, room full of people, it came back to us over and over again, and commissioners, all I'm trying to do is get it so this doesn't come back in front of us again. If we have a, a clearly articulated policy, um, this shouldn't come back. And the, um, uh, you know, let's just say, let's finish up with this. Um, I've tried to give a logical reason for this. Um, I've not attacked anybody or anybody's religious beliefs, anybody's non-religious beliefs or whatever. That does not have anything to do with this. I've gotten emails saying, this is just like how you tried to ban the New York Times, okay? How many people in this room think we tried to ban the New York Times? And if you raise your hand, you're absolutely wrong and I'll show you the proof, okay? So, 
But how many people out there have heard, oh, they banned the New York Times, they wanted to ban the New York Times. So that's rumor. That's how if you can't win the argument, you start twisting what the facts and what the discussion is. So I'm trying to bring it back one more time. And whatever the vote is, this is the last time I'm bringing it up, okay? I'm not bringing it up again. Uh, you'll have to wait for a new board and come back and, and try to approach them if this doesn't pass. That's why I thought this is a way to put our community to rest over this discussion of the sexual orientation displays. Commissioner, that's my word. Uh, I obviously intend to support my motion. Commissioner Carhan, you have the next one. Commissioner Kitchen, well put. Uh, I agree with uh, you 100%. I think it's a compromise, and I think that uh, we are the policymakers, so uh, uh, let's, let's move forward. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Slaybach. You know, I had a little bit of a PTSD when this all started coming back again. We had eight months of this being thrown at me, and I, I at us, um, our, but one, our public libraries do not have drag queen story hour. And whether Starbucks has it or not, that's a private business, and um, my daughters wouldn't I didn't take my daughters to drag queen story hour. Um, I also don't like, I don't support, just for the record, which I'm always on the record up here, I don't support the molestation or rape of children. I don't support it of women, men, animals. Please stop saying that's something I support and you're not going to vote me back in. At this, today, right now, I probably wouldn't run again because the things that are said to me are just ridiculous and I don't know what person would want this job. This is not the best paying job I've ever had and I work a c Saturdays and Sundays and I'm out there fighting to, to see that our children are clean and fed, not my children, the, the, the county's children. So. Please stop throwing that you're not going to vote me back in because God help you the next person who runs in my position. <laughs> and it really upsets me because I'm proud of the daughters that my husband and I have pr produced. Now that being said, huh, I, my sexual orientation is to my husband. That's the definition of sexual orientation. In Webster, a person's sexual orientation or identity is who they are attracted to. So that being said, I understand where you're going and I appreciate where you're going. And I don't want, again, my daughters, my grandchildren, future grandchildren, to be shown it upsets me, shown pornography, shown a way of life I don't want them to live. But I would be with them and make sure and read the books, and I've read a lot of books that I have not wanted to read to make sure that my daughter who reads 100 books a year, yeah, let me tell you, try catching up with Can that. Kind of come back to this. I'm coming come back, back to come, it. I'm to coming stay back. Focused, I'm right? staying focused. Uh, I, that, okay. It was brought about books. Okay. I do, I'm reading the books. So please stop putting this vague brush. Because of the sexual orientation and it being unclear, I cannot support that today. But that doesn't mean I support the molest molestation of children. Thank you. Okay. Anybody down here wish to comment? Sure. Okay, Commissioner Davis. The children are important, which I will remind everyone why I work well beyond my substantial board assignments to work on solving generational poverty for Citrus County children without taxes because I am a fiscal conservative. Make no mistake, working on that is what keeps them safe. Marginalized children living in poverty are the most at risk for child trafficking and other bad things fall falling upon them, including falling through the floor of their trailer or going without food and being nutritionally um, underfunded, shall we say. The gay community, the LGBTQ community, just wants to be accepted. A speaker earlier today 
actually talked about abnormal and criminal homosexuality in terms of Library of Congress. That's why we need a pride display, a small, tidy one. No drag queen story hours does not fit what we do in this county. It has never been put forward. I trust our staff. I will be the first one to shut it down if that ever happens. But much like I am not going to put forward any sort of resolution to paint all of our red stop signs purple because, hey, it might happen. Somebody may suggest that someday. We'll address it if and when it ever happens, okay? What the crowd continues to do that is trying to ban pride displays is conflating pedophilia with homosexuality. Y'all can imagine me a lot of pounds lighter and a lot of years younger. I was a pretty cute 13 and 14 year old with a blonde ponytail. I had multiple dirty old men experiences who tried to show me nasty pictures. Guess what I did? I come from a good family. I had good, in my dad had good income. I ran away because I was not marginalized and I was raised right. So there is a parental aspect to this. So finally, I would just like to say that all of the child stalking that happens, whether it's gay or straight, is all male driven. So with respect to all the men in my life I love, my brothers, my dad, my ex-husbands. Shh, shh, ladies and gentlemen, I would, please. I would just as soon say men are the problem. And with that, I believe I am out. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep it down, okay? We've been here a long time. You've been well behaved. Let's not, let's not change now. Commissioner, can I, excuse me, who? Is somebody talking back from the audience out there? If you're new to being here, we invite you to be here. This is your commission chamber, but we have rules for everybody to follow. If you refuse to rule, uh, follow those rules, we will have a sheriff's deputy escort you from the room, okay? So we want you to be here, but we're not here to conduct some kind of mob rule, okay? So let's be very clear about that. Commissioner Kennard, you have the floor, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. I, uh, I will start off by saying that uh, I know that all of us do, so this is not meant to be a slight. Uh, on anyone, uh, but I have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for uh, Director uh, Head, and uh, we just recently appointed our library advisory board uh, and asked them to, uh, to come forward with these policies. Uh, so I plan to uh, support the policies they brought forward as they're written. Uh, unfortunately, that means I can't support your motion. Okay, here we go. Everybody's spoken. And clerk, are you ready for a roll call vote, please? On the motion. I, what's that? What is that? I hear the noise. I'm trying to run a meeting. Okay, please call. Would you call the vote? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Commissioner Kitchen? Aye. Commissioner Carnahan? Aye. Commissioner Schlebaugh? Nay. Commissioner Davis? Nay. Commissioner Kennard? No. There you have it. So we resolved that. Let's move to item E5, please. I think you need to take an affirmative vote in favor of the policies. Though. Yeah, we need to adopt the policies. Motion well. to approve E4. Second. Gosh, I hope, I hope we have more people run for a chair so they can run the meetings more in the future. So, so what was the what was the, who made the motion? I did. Okay. Commissioner Davis made the motion to approve the, the submitted uh, policies as supplied. And Commissioner Kennard, did you make that second? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm not going to reopen this to public comment because we've heard what the public's had to say. So is there any further commissioner discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. 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 That's three to two. <laughs> Okay, let's move on now to E5 unless anybody has any objections. Okay, E5, Central Ridge Community Pool. Mr. Chairman, yes. I was going to ask that we could table this because there's some things that come, have come forward and possibly a private sector donation to save some taxpayers' money. And I... Well, once you approve the agenda, the agenda belongs yes, to I the... Yes, I know. Finish. 
Once you approve the agenda, the agenda belongs to the board. So if the, if the board would like to vote to table this or you'd like to make that motion and have it come back, then the board can mo vote on it and decide that. Yes, thank you, sir. And I'm, I'm sorry I missed it earlier. I was, I must have been daydreaming, but I would ask that we would, I would like to make a motion to table this and until I can bring back uh, several other options to the board at a later time. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Schlebach to not deal with this now and deal with it later at a later time. Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Second by Commissioner Kennard. Okay, tell us. Um, yes, I. there's some things that have come to light that hopefully um, we could have another option of possibly um, not even spending the $9,988 and... Um, and um, I haven't been able to solidify that yet, and so I just needed, you know, maybe a little bit of time. Okay, board, what's your pleasure? Um, any other discussion on it? My, again, I, I'm never, I never have a problem with waiting, but we've been discussing this for years. I, know. I mean, years. And every time it comes up, everybody says, well, give us another chance because we have enough thing to do but it's the board's call. So um, um, I'll acquiesce to the wisdom of the board, whatever you guys want to go. I'm just hoping to try to save that money. Well, no, because what happens with the pool? No, we'll take care in taking care of it, but bringing something forward, like I said. Um, Is it something that the county's gonna be responsible for maintaining? No, sir. Okay, well, I, I mean, if it's about saving 10 grand and it doesn't cost us anything in the future, I don't have a problem with waiting. But because I really would like to get this pool filled also. Sure. But it, you know. I've been trying for eight years to get it filled. I was excited. I thought this was going to be it today, but we'll see what happens. So, uh, we were this close. Okay, so the motion, is, is there any other commissioner discussion? Um, I guess I should hear from the public if there's uh, any comments about tabling this until future meeting. Nobody has anything to say. Okay, commissioners, uh, on a motion by Commissioner Schlebach, second by Commissioner Kennard to table E5 to a future date. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Thank okay. you. Sure. Sorry for the e, inconvenience. E6, please. Yes, E6, uh, they apparently have changed their name again. Approve and authorize the chairman to execute an updated certificate of public convenience and necessity, reflect the name change of Rocky Mountain Holdings LLC doing business as Bay Flight for Advanced Air Life Support Service in Doesn't Citrus mean. County. The certification of public convenience and necessity shall be valid until September 30, 2024. Motion to approve item E6. Second. Second. Okay, so Commissioner Kennard makes a motion, second by Commissioner Davis. Is there any public comment on item E6? Commissioners, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. By the way, just as informational, I assume you folks in the green shirts are here about the uh, land use, which is at 501. So it's not like we're ignoring you. It's just that we can't even look at that until 501. So just so you know. So relax and enjoy your visit here at the county, <laughs> county commission. So let's see, we are now, uh, we vote on E6, and we're now at E7, please, Mr. Oliver. Yes, approve the trip cancellation no-show policy for use in transit services door-to-door -door trip program. Mr. Chairman, a move to approve E7. Second. Okay, so Commissioner Slavo makes the motion, second by Commissioner Kennard. Is there any public comment on item E7? Okay, Commissioners, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. E8, please. Yes, concur with recommendation uh, action of non-performance assessment of 75000 against Core Civic's June invoice. We continue to work with Core Civic uh, to get their performance within contractual specification. Motion to approve E8. Second. Okay, Commissioner Davis makes the motion. Second by Commissioner Kennard. Is any public comment on item E8? Commissioners, anything else? What's your what's your feeling on this, Mr. Oliver? I mean, do you think they're working the best they can at this, or we have a meeting tomorrow morning? Okay, great. Well, uh, through April, they were doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been as good since April. That's right. It started heading heading uh, south after that. Okay, so on E8, all in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. E9, please. Approve and authorize chairman to execute the youth athletic organization agreement between Citrus County, Florida and East Citrus Soccer League, Inc. doing business as Citrus United Soccer League during the term of this agreement. Citrus County, Florida at its sole discretion may inspect the condition of the athletic fields, equipment, concessions and facilities. East Citrus Soccer League uh, doing business as Citrus United Soccer League will be charged $25 per person per hour for any inspections during the 22-23 season. Motion to approve E9. Second. Okay, Commissioner Davis makes the motion. Second by Commissioner Kennard. Is there any public comment on E9? Any further board discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Nay. Passes four to one. Okay, let's see, E10 please. Yes, approve and authorize the chairman to execute the grant certification and assurances for funding assistance through the U.S. Department of uh, Justice Programs Bureau of Justice Assistance FY 2022 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Local Solicitation, the amount of 31061 Motion to approve E10. Second. Okay, Commissioner Davis makes the motion, second by Commissioner Slaybaugh. Is there any comment from the public on E10? Commissioners, anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Ladies and gentlemen, just a little um, information. Please keep the noise down. If you come in and you can't find a seat, it's up to you if you wish to stand at the back wall. Um, but the jury assembly room has been open from what I understand. There is a television and sound in there so you can hear if the room gets too full and you don't wish to stand. And when we take public input, you will be able to come in here and give your public input. So just so everyone knows if, the, if we run out of seats, there are seats across the hall, okay? And if you see people looking, perhaps you can share that information, all right? So I believe we're at E11 now, Mr. Oliver. Yes, discussion and direction regarding the extension of the due diligence closing date and the status of a portion of the deposit for uh, 3406 North Turkey Oak uh, Drive, Crystal River, uh, better known as Betts Farm. We're proposing that uh, for each month that uh, he, he continues the due diligence uh, that it be 25 thousand dollars a month in an email he proposed eight percent interest which would actually be higher if that, if he meant eight percent on the sales price uh, so we think this is a favorable uh, we've not heard anything back from him at this point yet are Chair. you looking for a motion uh, yes but I heard Commissioner Carnahan we'll make a motion to uh, approve 11 second okay. okay so we have a motion by Commissioner Carnahan second by Commissioner Slaybaugh is there any public comment I'm Hamid Ashtari. It's an honor to be in front of you today. Oh, sorry. I, I am sorry that uh, things are taking a little bit longer than they used to. I've been a drainage engineer, civil engineer in Florida for like 30 years practicing, and this is the, this is unusual times. Everything is taking a lot longer than expected. So when, when you do a big project like this, the most important thing to any, any investor is just like, can we build this or not? You know, can we get the permits for it? And so as a result of that, then you have to go through a whole bunch of process like getting geotechnical survey, environmental assessments and everything, and then put in everything in front of SWEFMUT and other permitting agencies to see if they agree or not. So basically, uh, I, I wrote to Mr. Oliver and asking for an extension and he was gracious enough to accept in a, in a sense. So I really appreciate that, yeah, this, uh, you know, we would be willing to say that, yeah, of course, you know, the $25,000 a month for <coughs> every month that we're gonna be late for the, you know, for the, for, the, for, the, for the permitting. But we will also bring you up to date as to exactly what we're doing. We could give you a report bi-weekly, you know, just to show exactly what it is that we're doing so that you know that we're not sitting on our hands and, and, and whatnot. 
and we all understand that, of course, you know, the sooner we, we do it, the better it is for everybody. So I appreciate your time and thank you. So uh, just so I'm clear, you have no objection to what the motion is then? The, uh, and, uh, well, <laughs> as long as the, the, the motion, I guess, if it is the, if it's just one month, it's a little bit short. But if you allow us to go for the $25,000 per month, you know, it will take us probably up to Christmas time, which would be like four months. And that would be the full $100,000. Which then, my understanding would be, becomes all non-refundable, right? Exactly. Okay. Is that your understanding of this? Uh, we can do that if that's the board's direction. <laughs> Commissioner Carnahan, is that your understanding of what your motion was? Uh -huh. Okay. And Commissioner Slaybach, is that your understanding of the second? No, I thought okay. it was 25, uh, one time 25, 30 day extension, then 30, another 30 days with a $25,000 non refundable. It would be $25,000 for each, what he's proposing is $25,000 a month for each month he extends. It becomes, and if he and closes, there's no additional cost, but if right. he doesn't, that comes out of the deposit. Okay, then, so then I'm good. You're good yes. then? Okay, so everybody's good? You still have a few seconds left if you had anything else. Didn't mean to talk on your time, but I don't know. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so okay. much for your time. Okay. Is there anyone else that has a comment on item E11, please? Any other public comment? Okay. So, um, board discussion. We have a motion to approve E11. Everybody Well, understand? we'd ask for you to approve the motion uh, that it's $25,000 a month uh, until, uh, in, until it either closes or the uh the deposit right, so, is no longer so not there. e 11 what what we have restated then right yeah okay. and uh authorize the chairman to sign the addendum okay and the clerk's got got that correct right madam clerk so are we doing motion to approve paying twenty five thousand a month is it up to four months or until it's well completed? up to four months up to four months okay. what i heard. okay up to 20? four months and authorize chairman to and sign the chairman to sign thank okay. you okay and that's what everybody agreed to motion in the second one. So, okay so we're clear on that. We've heard from the public. Is there any further board discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. Item F. Outstanding items. It appears that you only want to remove item 5 and 10. Is that, that is correct? correct. So Make a motion now. We accept item F with the deletion of 5 and 10. Second. Okay, Commissioner Carnahan makes that motion, second by Commissioner Slaybot. Does the public have any comment on item F? Nope, I just I was just checking the traffic control here. Okay. So I see no pub, no public comment. Uh, board, any other discussion? No. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Mr. Oliver, anything for us? Uh, no, I don't have anything okay. uh, else. You have the advisory board. Uh. Well, let, let me ask you this while we're talking to you on this area. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding as we sit here, we're waiting for numbers to come back for the preliminary budget hearing. My understanding is that has not been forthcoming from the sheriff, so we're trying to glean through the numbers that we have to come up with that number we are okay and i've i've got a draft here that i have not reviewed yet okay so you have a draft that you haven't reviewed and these numbers have not come from the sheriff right uh no okay so here we go so we'll, we'll if the time comes today to have that discussion we need to keep that in mind okay i think we've been able to back into some numbers i'm not sure they agree with it but well and see and that's my problem i said that in the very beginning you know if we do this arbitrarily they're going to say we never agreed to those numbers and we're going to be right back to where we started from so that's what i said earlier so um hopefully over somebody over in the sheriff's um, office is listening and we'll send those numbers over to us so we can have their numbers to work with okay <laughs> Okay, so with that said, we are ready to move on to item I, advisory board announcements for the Citrus Springs Advisory Council. And as I yes. see it, we have one opening and one person wishes to be appointed. Is that correct? That is correct. We should even be able to handle that. I <laughs> think so. So, board, what is, your, what is your pleasure with this item? Mr. Chairman, I um, move to approve I-1 and nominate and appoint Mr. Wayne Nagel to the Citrus Springs Advisory 
council with an expire as a regular member expired his term will expire 131 2024 okay so a second to that second okay so commissioner slaybock makes the motion second by commissioner davis uh <coughs> any public comment any further board discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed say nay <coughs> And that passes unanimously. Committee reports. Commissioner Kennard, you got any committee reports for us? I have nothing. Okay, Commissioner Davis, any committee reports? Um, I went to three. I managed to not have my notes teed up. So actually I went to four, including Aviation Advisory Board. Um, I did TDC, Aviation Advisory Board, WRSA, you were missed. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. something else, CFCC. Four CF, sorry. Um, but I got nothing. Okay. I get, need to get better with having my notes teed up. All right. So, uh, Commissioner Slaybaugh, anything from committee reports? Yes, I met, uh, had my Veterans Advisory Board, and uh, I was pleased to have a quorum. We've been having trouble with quorum. And uh, we're moving along to get um, some additional equipment for when people are deployed that uh, hopefully that our leader that gave the pledge today is working with um, Marco Rubio on that and uh, that would be quite a coup for Citrus County if we could get this machine that produces the ID cards right there from the Crystal River Armory and um, so I'm fingers crossed that that we're moving along and that we could get that accomplished and that is the only one I have so okay. thank you. Commissioner Carnahan, any committee report? No, I have a spring steering committee tomorrow, so I'm not. Okay, and my next TBRPC meeting is the second Monday of August. Hard to believe that's next week, or August is next week. Huh? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, I had a question I was going to bring up later, but given that Commissioner Davis mentioned WRWSA, um, in our budget book on page... Well, I sure wish I had those readers. <laughs> 691. Randy, uh, let's see. It looks like uh, line number 453. It says WRWSA renewal replacement. And it looks like current balance is 1.969 million. Um, and then... Let's see, projected revenue is 183, about 184,000. Projected expenses, 152,362. Um, the expenses there, is that money that is being set aside to pay for um, replacement parts for the Charles A. Black uh, well field? Yes, yeah, a plant and equipment. Okay, so we, we're expected to pay 152,000 in maintenance and repairs to that. Yeah, I mean, I can get Mr. Cheek to give you a detailed breakdown of that, but we're responsible for having a certain amount in the renewal and replacement account, and we're also responsible for uh, maintenance and repair of that. Uh, oh, okay. All so we're paying them for is basically the raw water drawn from the ground. Okay. So for the people who have not listened to me chirp about this thing for the last six years this is a well field that we have paid repaid the majority of the cost of development for this we've repaid um, what it cost to build this thing um, the water authority refuses to turn it over to us we pay for the repairs on it we pay we do the repairs with our own staff and then we pay per get we pay to the water authority uh, per gallon of water that comes out of this thing that we've paid for and we repair and do not own. So for our commissioners, not new commissioners, but our commissioners that were elected in 2020 and the candidates in the office, um, it would behoove you to pay attention to what this water authority is doing to the utility customers of Citrus County that they are not doing to any of the other three county members of that authority. Can I, can I ask, um, <laughs> I'm just throwing this out. Um, is this something we can approach the legislature about? Is this something that can be absolved or done away with through an act of the legislature? 
I know we're compelled to belong yeah, to it, yeah. but that's probably only because they've created the monster to begin with, right? So uh, uh, that's just a thought. You know? Yeah, I will, I will inquire. I was going to say, seeing whoever is most concerned about <laughs> the, this might be the person that wants to check into it. But, but it just seems to me, you know, we have had issues, you know, back and forth with the, with in the past with the hospital and stuff, and that's because the legislator treated us differently for reasons at the time. Mm -hmm. So it might be time to re reanalyze that. I will inquire. I know that uh, Representative uh, Mazzullo, no, Representative Masulo, <laughs> um, is not a fan of these uh, quasi-governmental uh, boards that um, essentially, you know, Hold you over a barrel because you're out. You're outvoted by the other members of, of this board, um, and we are Citrus County Utility customers are a funding mechanism uh, for that water authority. Okay. So, so want to steal our water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I was you. You said exactly what I wanted to say, and but even a, just a little more. Do you have an exit plan uh, for us, for the citizens, and and? And uh, I think Commissioner Kitchen asked you that. To we we can get out of it, but they still own our our largest um, um, utility, our largest our largest uh, well field. So what we're stuck with is having one voice against many, or having no voice. That's in right. Something yeah. that is That's owned right. by right. Exactly. Well, again, like I said, it's the legislature creates these things. Maybe there's something they can look at. I will inquire. Okay. If we uh, can figure, may I? I'm sorry. Yes. If we can figure out a way to solve that, I am completely on board. <laughs> Great. Yeah, well. I don't know. I think I'd have to hear a little more about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Commissioner Carnahan, anything else for us? Nope. I think we got enough in front of us. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Kennard, anything for no, us? No, sir. Okay. Commissioner Davis. No, sir. Commissioner Schleybach. No, thank you. Okay. I only have one small item I just wanted to share with you. I, I was at the groundbreaking of the uh, Clear Sky Rehabilitation Center. Uh, really, really uh, quality company from the folks that I met there. And I just wanted to share this with our staff and the citizens. Sometimes I think we get a bad rap for, uh, you know, Citrus County isn't business friendly and so on and so forth. So I, I asked their head corporate people who were out here from, I believe they said it was Albuquerque, the office most of them were from. And this company builds these things all over the place and this is their first one in Florida. So keep in mind, they could have built this anywhere in Florida and they chose Citrus County to build it. So knowing that, I asked them, you know, this is gonna create a lot of high paying jobs, this is gonna pay a lot of taxes, plus it's gonna give our citizens a real state-of-the-art rehabilitation facility right you know here in the middle of our county so what was your experience with the county and the one person told me wonderful great best people we ever worked with but this other person went out of their way and said of all the hospitals we're building all over the country Citrus County was the best place to build because they were the best people to work with most helpful so I just want our citizens and our staff to know that's what is being heard. So again, maybe we can't make every single person who applies for a permit happy, but um, from the big folks that we're trying to attract with the high paying, high quality jobs, uh, we seem to be doing well once we get them here. Okay? Very good. Okay, and let's see, uh, Madam Attorney, do you have anything for us? I, I do, I just, I know you guys have a lot to do today with your budget and um, you know, Randy and his staff have been working on that, but today you guys handled a couple things that your staff has been working on for months and months and months, and I know that uh, staff joins me in thanking you for doing some of the things you did, because we have put a lot of time into some of the things you de dealt with today, so thank you. Okay, very good. All right, um, can uh, Randy step out of the room? I'm just curious where we are with the budget should, because we're at the point we're going to do open to the public, and then either we're going to we're going to take a recess until 5:01, or we're going to move on with the budget here. As he was leaving, I think I heard something along the lines of, "I'm not comfortable with these numbers yet." Okay, Mr. Alver, here's here's where oh, we here are. He is. We're up to open I to heard the. My name yeah, we're going to go open to the public, and then after that, we have two options between 501, and that is um, 
recess the meeting and come back at 501 or move back into our budget hearing what it, do, you don't have the information you I need. don't I'm not going to be comfortable in that length of time okay so now what are our options if we don't we need to adjourn that previous hearing and reschedule it for a future date is that where we are yes that would or yes you don't think you'll or we could wait till after the Metacrest thing and I could see if I could straighten it out then Okay, board, what do you want to do? I, I, would, I would do that. I like wait, that. Wait until after Medicare. Yeah. Okay, let's wait and see We're what here. happens. Mm -hmm. We're here. Let's stay all night if we have to to get that resolved. I'd rather well, do it than rather having a special meeting. So. It's very disappointing that we left here thinking we had an understanding and now we're not getting the information. Yep. Extremely That's disappointing. They, so. might be, they, they might be gathering. Let's be positive. <laughs> you want to read the emails? Uh, the email that I saw said, we're not yeah. giving you that. We don't have to. That was, that's, yeah, that, I, yeah, yeah, I exactly. didn't read the email. So anyway, um, so here we are. We are open to the public. So is there anyone here? This does not include, at this point in time, this is not the Meadowcrest issue. This yeah. is anything before we get to the 501 that anyone would like to talk about. Yes, ma'am. Janet Barrick on behalf of Citrus Spring Civic Association. Earlier, I had suggested, and I didn't hear any comments back, about the fact that we, as a civic association, would like you to talk to the builder, you know, the permitting, and before they give the certificate of occupancy, you know, that last little permit that they get, that the builder is, hound, is made accountable and does the repairs to the roads in front of the properties that they are building. They are making a mess of our roads. Our roads are not scheduled for repair or resurfacing anytime soon. Okay, so we would like you to have your staff do their job. And I know it's part of their job because it's part of the building thing. Building, they have to do that. But just like uh, we've got another problem where we have people that buy extra building sites and then they get a unit deed. And then they get a pr approval from Citrus County. I got an approval, and I've got permit on my desk right now. 768 square foot shed. We have rules in place, and it says on the bottom of your page, the bottom paragraph, please check with, because there are restrictions. But you as a county are approving these things, and they're saying, well, the county approved it. That's not fair. Because people are doing things, and they say, well, the county approved it. And I say, but if you look at your permit, it says you still need to come to the Civic Association because we do have deed restrictions. Now, I know that I'm going to be told, well, that's a civil matter. But it's not really a civil matter if you're not reminding the people there are rules in the county you're buying. Please abide by everything that's on the front page of that building permit. And, and it, it makes this hard for us because now I really am going to have to do something legally, okay? And like somebody said, it costs $6,000 in legal fees. Believe me. So the thing is, it's not fair to somebody new to the community, like the person that came up earlier about the water. All of a sudden, he's got a $2,000 bill for water, okay? Now, granted, the builder maybe should have told him. The realtor should have told him. Okay, I don't know which one had that responsibility. But somebody should have told them that there is a rule in place that once the water comes down, you do have to pay for that assessment and for that hookup. Okay, so we would like just a little bit of cooperation. Okay, and we did a very nice meet and greet the other night. We had 24 candidates show up, and we had approximately 250 people. We didn't do any damage to the building. And when we left the place, it was clean and stuff. However, lately, parks and recs are having problems when we rent out the building. We came in on Sunday morning to use the building, and the handle to the back door was completely broken. Not counting other things previously, but I mean, every time we, we turn around, there's more damage. We asked you, would you like to give us the building to the Civic Association? and Four or five years ago, you said for a dollar, okay? I know that number is off the table. Do you want to sell us the building, and what would you consider a reasonable price? 
and we would like to hear from you. Okay? We are an active, live and well civic association, and we would like to know your thoughts on it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak at this time? For, uh, anything other than the 501? Okay, we'll close uh, public comment, open to the public. Uh, Mr. Oliver, I, we've said this I don't know how many times, we don't enforce deed restrictions. We don't, and we don't know what the deed restrictions are in every subdivision right. in the county. Right. So we have a generic notice on there that says check the, you know, the deed restrictions because one uh, HOA may permit a 500 square foot out, you know, out building and another one may I have no limit at all. So we don't get involved with that. That is a private matter between the uh, HOA and the homeowner. Exactly. And we said that, I know, five, six, seven times in the past. So we add eight to the list and say, well, actually, it was cooperation putting that on the building permit, which we're not required to do. We thought that would help. But we can't make them do that. I mean, we can't, we don't know what every code is. We can't not issue a legal permit because we don't know what the codes in that community are. So, uh, Anybody else get anything on that? I would, yeah. I would just like to add, Janet, you know I heart you, but seriously, we have cooperated. And just because people are new, new to the community, deed restrictions exist everywhere. People should always be on the lookout for them before they buy a house, and they need to know them. And I'm sorry, but that's my answer. Okay, so with that said, um, the decision we've come to is we will hold open the original budget preliminary hearing meeting until after the 501, and then at that time either we'll continue that meeting or we will adjourn that meeting. Uh, at this point in time, I'm sure. going to allow, what's real, that? Oh, real quick, I want to address the issue of uh, selling in the building. If, uh, I say that we can not get an uh, appraisal and whatever the appraisal comes back on the stuff on the building. Do we, is there anything in our agreement with that we had to deal with with the lawsuit and everything out there that would preclude us from selling that? I mean, all the citizens would want to have to take it on, right? I can't answer that, but I will say this, to get an appraisal on that building is probably going to be 2500 to $5,000. Yeah, yeah. Well, my opinion would be, Commissioner Carnahan, if they want to buy the building, let them do the but appraisal and come in and say, here's the appraisal, this is what we'll offer you for it. So. I'm good with that. <laughs> That'd be a good place to start. So. I mean, I'm good with that. Okay, so we'll see what kind of interest is there then. Um, because if you're going to spend 6000 to sue us, you might want to spend 2500 to get an appraisal to, to buy the place. So, um, Our next upcoming meetings will be um, August 9th at 1 o'clock, August 30th at 1 o'clock, and September 13th at 1 o'clock. And we'll have additional, I think, workshops and stuff perhaps coming up and other special meetings which we'll announce. Madam Attorney, you had a look on your face like there's something I'm forgetting. What, what do you want to talk about? No, sir. Okay. You give me that look like... Okay. Maybe that's eagerness to get to the next. Okay. All right. Well, again, ladies and gentlemen, it's 428. My, the clerk and I have synchronized our watches. So at 501, we will get started with PUD 22-03 mil, uh, Green Mills LLC. So uh, we will stand in recess until 501.